Dear honorable guests, audience in JCCUB, and on, uh, audience online, good afternoon. Welcome to the Hope Ahead Arts and Youth Mental Wellbeing and Creative Citizenship Open Forum. Our forum is, is on live stream, and audience can revisit the forum at later at Tycoon website. 各位觀眾，大家好。今日嘅公開論壇咧，會喺 live stream 誒、呃、同步播放。稍後咧，亦都會喺大館嘅網頁重温。Today forum will mainly deliver in English support with Cantonese recap from time to time. Yet during sessions of plenary discussion, please feel free to discuss with us in either Cantonese or English. 今日嘅活動咧，主要以英語嘅進行，以及咧用廣東話輔助。And also one more reminder: for the sake of your health and others' health, please wear your mask in the whole program. 亦都咧，請各位咧，全程咧戴上誒口罩，為咗大家嘅健康着想。Ah, I'm today facilitator Elaine Zhang, social worker from Christian Family Service Centre. I'm also one of the participants in the project. Um, may I introduce our project director, Dorothy Wong, <laughs> the founder of Dream of Tomorrow. Dorothy, would you please briefly introduce to us about this project, especially the name Elan, Lost Child Project. What's the meaning of Elan, and、uh, what we are doing in the whole project? Okay, okay. Thank you, Elaine.、Uh, thank you all to come here today. It's very Difficult time, so special thanks to you to come here in presence.、Uh, actually, our name Elan, the Lost Child Project Hong Kong, is a French Elan, means the spirits, the liveliness. I think the liveliness, the word, is very important for、uh, for us, for Hong Kong people, for all the people around the world, especially under the pandemic、uh, situation.、Uh, we have been working on this project for over a year. The Lost Child Project was originally developed by David Glass. David、uh, is a physical master, physical、uh, physical theatre master, and also he is our international consultant of this project. Olivia Yan from、uh, All Theatre Workshop and I from Dream of Tomorrow, and all together with all the artists, together we produced eleven arts program in the past two weeks. We are so delighted to have、uh, each and every one of you here be with us to join us for this finale program, the Open Forum. In the past two weeks,、uh, in this、uh, beautiful cultural places, Tycoon, full of heritage, series of programs were held, include dance, theaters, music, mindfulness workshop. And also、uh, master workshops and storytelling through multimedia presentation. Actually, all this program come together. We would like to help our young people to make them feel alive. Olivia, as an artist and also director, while、uh, I am a drum and movement therapist, actually we are looking for a way to help the young people to、uh, improve and to better. Their well-being and also their mental health situation. Thank you very much for the support from many different organisations, media partners, venue partners, and special friends. We have to give to Hong Kong Jockey Club and also Tycoon. We, without their help and support, we cannot materialise all this program throughout the past one week and past two weeks actually. Thank you so so much for your help, Olivia Yan, and also our creative partner and I will share more about our experience later in the forum. 咁啊，用中文 recap 少少。咁我哋其實咧，依個嘅 program 動氣同埋香港藝術計劃動氣咧，其實係一個嘅誒法文，都係其實係 David 教我哋嘅，即係去講我哋生命嘅一個嘅活力，一個嘅 liveliness。咁其實喺過去，即係我哋籌備咗足足有一年嘅時間。咁過去呢一個禮拜咧，其實誒誒、呃、有唔同嘅活動啦，包括係喺網上邊，我哋即係現場，我哋做一個嘅誒、呃呃、Facebook Live 啦，喺現場做嘅 performance， 亦都咧又喺誒有 dance 啦，有啱啱星期六，我哋全日有九個嘅節目咧，即係喺現場我哋有誒。呃
音樂會啦，有、呃、mindfulness 嘅 program 啦，嚇咁呢十一個 program 咧，其實咧都係希望咧喺當中幫到我哋嘅年輕人去揾到自己多少少。當我哋講呢個 project 係叫做 lost child 嘅時候咧，我哋期望我哋唔單止係年青人，甚至係大人，我哋都可以揾到我哋自己裏邊嗰個嘅聲音，裏邊嗰個嘅小孩。嚇咁咧喺呢度咧，即係即係誒多謝再一次嘅多謝，即係香港賽馬會同埋大館頂你嘅支持。當然即係唔少得嘅係我哋一班即係。係撲心撲命去參與喺當中嘅咁多位嘅 artist， 我哋其實成個 project 咧有成百幾人參與喺當中。咁當然即係 Olivia 好英明嘅領導底下啦，即係俾我哋有好好嘅即係 artistic direction 嘅帶領。咁喺今日咧，其實呢個論壇裏邊，我哋其實唔想淨係我哋自己自己玩咁樣，我哋好想同大家一齊去諗下。即係，亦都我哋唔係任何嘅 solution。正如我哋話，我哋唔係能夠解決啲咩嘅問題，我哋只係 play problems。我諗相信喺呢一個嘅時間，我哋好需要用更多創意嘅方式咧，去玩轉一啲嘅問題。我哋其實係一個 open end， 好想大家一齊去參與，點樣諗下用藝術可以幫助我哋呢個城市多啲。咁我希望咧，即係將個時間交翻俾阿葉領先。Thank you, Dorothy. We're so expecting to hear the experience from you and your team later in the sessions. Before we go to the first keynote speech, let me introduce our overseas guest speaker. Hi. The first one, David Glass, International Lost Child Project. Hi, David. Please give a few words to us. <laughs> I'm unmuted. Uh, it's wonderful to be here, and it's so exciting, um, especially at this time. Um, and but also, it's so wonderful to have had such a extraordinary group of uh, uh, committed artists, social workers, um, and uh, organizers around this festival. So we really owe them an enormous um, thank you, and to all of you who have. Uh, Committed your time to this. I know that your、uh, lives are, are full of things and also full of、uh, a lot of problems at the moment. And so, thank you so much for joining us, and also our overseas、uh, visitors, also to the festival from New Zealand,、um, from the Conch. So, welcome all. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce the co-founder of the Conch from New Zealand, Tom McCurry and Nina Na Walo Walo. Nisam bulunaka kiora tato, as we say in New Zealand. It's a very great pleasure to be here in your company this evening. Oh well, this evening in New Zealand.、Um, congratulations to all of the team for for organising this wonderful event, and to the sponsors Taekwon and the Jockey Club for your incredible support of this very important、um, issue. Of、uh, supporting the well-being of young people, we're really honoured to be here this evening. And on behalf of Nina Nawalo Walo and myself, yes, Ni Sambulu Naka. Nina. Kiora and Ni Sambulu Naka, Talo for Lava, and warm Pacific greetings to you all. Um, I echo all of the words from、uh, David and Tom, and it's an absolute honour to、um, to have been invited by you. And we, I really look forward to this evening's discussions. And thank you so much. Thank you. The Conch is a theatre company from New Zealand with variable experience working with young people on challenging topics through arts. Thank you all, and we'll talk to you soon. The most valuable part of this project is the possibility of collaborate cross-disciplinary cooperations. Today, we have clinical psychologists, researcher to tell the story from the theoretical and analytical perspective. Let me introduce our two guest speakers who are physically be with us. First one, Dr. Paul Wong, Wong Wingting, Boxy. Associate Professor from Department of Social Work and Social Administration from the University of Hong Kong, Vajra Hadan Pawaski, <laughs> <laughs> Monitoring Evaluation Accountability and Learning Manager and Advisor from Save the Children Hong Kong, Hong Kong Gao Zhao Yitong Wei. Okay, without further ado, let's start the forum with our first keynote speech. How to be resilient and stay well in times of adversity. You have joy, yet gain strong zhichu. Thank you, Dr. Paul Wong.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, for those who are in here, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it's such a hot day, and you made it. So now you can chill out and cool down a little bit. And for those who are outside the room, I'm sure you are in your comfort in your room. So that's good. Such an honor to be here. My name is uh, Paul Wong. I am an associate professor at the Department of Social Work, uh, Hong Kong University. My training is a clinical psychologist. I have not been involved in any art performance, no training in art, but why am I here? Um, last year, probably the time in November, uh, we heard a lot of sad stories from young people. They were killing themselves. And then we met Dorothy and Olivia, and we talked about this potential collaboration with Tycoon and themselves and myself. Then when I was listening to their presentations about their work, there are a number of key words that I want to point to you, why I am here and why this is my honor to be here. Okay, so there are... Okay, so this is actually a picture from Dave's website. Um, can you guess why I put this picture up? It's a hand crawling from the eye. Actually, what he does is very eye-opening to me. So I picked this picture, and then I found all these words from his website. He used art, or performing art, to engage people. Young people sometimes can be hard to be engaged, especially by adults. So if we just keep talking and talking and talking and lecturing, it's actually kind of boring. So using art to engage people is a good way. Entertain. Who wants to sit down and listen to a boring lecture? No one. So if you want to teach people, if you want to educate people, we need to have entertainment. That's why we call edutainment, E-D-U-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T. -E we educate, surely. We have to educate people through what? Storytelling. Since we were born, we all like to listen to stories. Okay, so storytelling is a really good way to spread our messages. We play problems, and then we fail at excellence. We don't stop at being good. We aim for high level, excellence level, even though if we fail, we aim high and shoot low. Okay, so fail at excellence is a really good term that I think is very eye-opening. And power. There are lots of vulnerable people in the world, especially now in the COVID-19 period. I just read the news today. It was saying there are more people die from hunger than COVID-19 because of COVID-19. So it's a humanitarian issue. So we have to empower a lot of vulnerable people through different ways. Some people like to listen, some people like to exercise, some people like to be entertained. We engage people with different ways. Most importantly, all the things we do should be and must be sustainable. If we don't do things sustainably, then it's like bao yin fa. It's like something that bursts and then disappears. We don't want that. So we want to sustain it in our life. So Dave, if you can hear me, thank you for putting all these words in, on your website. It's meaningful. Then secondly, this is a picture of Hua. Olivia, that's actually the first time when I saw her and she was listening to me and writing Nocturne all the time. So I was really appreciative of having these two people listen to my water blower. <laughs> anyway, so I saw this um, from, from her website too, and then very inspired by her thinking of making the whole event as a documentary. So it's not just, how many still going? Huh? Huh? Good documentary film. That would be good. So it's not just a snapshot of events, but by turning all these wonderful 11 projects into a documentary film, I think this is meaningful. Okay, then because of Save the Children, I have project working with Save the Children too, but then when I hear that they are trying to do something, as in, this, 
asking for proposals to promote the mental well-being for children and young people in Hong Kong. This is something new from Save the Children. Normally, in the past, they were doing advocacy a lot on different issues, safety and whatnot. But now they are calling for proposals and projects to make child and youth mental health better in Hong Kong. We need that. Okay. Hong Kong children and young people, they suffer a lot from the education system. But now there are other, other things too. So I can foresee that the coming generations of young people would be having more difficult times than us. Okay, so having this uh, project will be a wonderful thing for our young people. And then later on, I find out that they actually have a child ambassador as Pepper Picker. I <laughs> My son watched Pebble Pig a lot when he was younger, so that's why he probably picked up the Oxford English accent from the Pebble Pig too. So because of that, that's why I want to work with Save the Children. Huh? Sometimes invite Pebble Pig to Hong Kong too. Huh? Okay, anyway, so th that's why it's my honor, and I'm happy that I can work with all these parties with all these wonderful ideas of engaging young people. Okay, so I'm not promoting for this uh, art group, but this group came from France uh, in May last year, almost a year ago. They came and they had a show called Hikikomori. How many of you have heard about the term called Hikikomori? Good, huh? One person. <laughs> Hikikomori is a Japanese term that describes a group of young people. They stay home for longer than six months and they sometimes they go out, but they go out and buy cigarettes and go to Cha Chai or 7 Eleven and then they walk back home. They become a group of young people that they have no connections with the world and they probably stop connecting with the parents. And what is worrisome now is we have the middle-aged hikikomori in Japan, which means they have been in the room for more than 20-something years, and their parents are aging and dying. So think about if they're in the room and their parents are passed away. Who are going to look after them? No one. Okay, but the thing is, this hikikomori phenom phenomenon is not just a Japanese so-called cultural bound issue. It has been in Hong Kong for 20 years, without your knowledge. We do have hikikomori issue in Hong Kong. What Hong Kong called Yanbai Qingling, called Hidden Youth. My research estimates that there are about 40,000 young people locking themselves up in the room. But probably about three, 400 young people got help, okay, less than 5%. But what I'm trying to say is, I was so inspired by a group of French artists that came all the way to Hong Kong and did a show on Hikikomori. On that particular night, with a room full of 200 people, like this, actually less than two people know this term before. But it was a wonderful two hours to explain, to educate, to advocate for people to care more about this particular problem. So it's my research interest, I'm not pushing you to like this idea, but I'm telling you using art to advocate for something is actually a very good way. Okay? It's entertaining and it's educating. Okay, so now we are back to the third wave of COVID-19. A lot of people concern and care about COVID-19 because it's affecting your, you, affecting your health or your family members or whatnot. But this is a uh, wonderful website called Visual Capitalist. Um, they put up a lot of wonderful graphs or whatever that put, put, portrays something. Um, this is how much the size of death related to COVID-19 and this is how much of death related to cardiovascular diseases, cancers, uh, dementia, and suicide in the middle. So my point is, 
a lot of attention because it's related to us. We pay to COVID-19. But there are a lot of many, many issues in the world that need as much attention from you as well. For example, suicide. We have 800,000 people per year. They kill themselves. There are 20 more times people they attempt. There are almost 100 more times people who thought about that. But those people, one of the reasons they kill themselves because they don't have enough attention from the others. Okay? They die with loneliness. Okay, so my point is, if you can spend so much attention on COVID-19, you might want to spare some time of yourself to care for other issues. There are many issues that need our attention. Okay, so when I prepared a PowerPoint, it was in May this time. So I want to share with you, eventually, the purpose of this sharing, it's about telling you the mental health of um, COVID-19 related issues. This is a wonderful paper from Lancet that was published in May. So they actually point out a few vulnerable groups that need our attention. First, are the people that they are children, young people, and families. They are affected by school, school closures. Hong Kong is a lucky place. We had control uh, the COVID-19, but if you look at the US and other places, their schools are still closed and they don't have domestic workers like us, so they need to find people to look after the children. The children are flowing to other places to be looked after by, by, by strangers and whatnot. And because of the closures of business and schools, there are people that are affected by uh, substance use, gambling, and domestic violence, and you might not have thought about that closures actually leads to domestic violence. In, remember, during the closure time, many families are becoming unemployed, and the parents don't go to work, and they are stressed, and they are depressed, and they use their children to release the anger. So domestic violence can increase during this kind of COVID-19 period. There are other vulnerable groups too. For example, elderly people, they are kind of not so mobile, immobile. There are people with learning difficulties. I have a project that I work on um, families with um, children with autism. During the school closures, the kids have to lock down in very subdivided flat, they're all locked together and the kids have no place to release their energy. So it becomes a war song. Uh, there are other groups, like prisoners, homeless, refugees, they are all suffering from this. And most importantly, uh, the unemployment rate in Hong Kong is up and coming. It's up now, but should be up, upper, <laughs> higher. So these are the people that we should pay more attention to. Okay, so I talk a lot of issues, problems, but as a psychologist, well, we look for solutions. So the talk is on what is resilient. From a psychological perspective, resilient means uh, it's a way of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. But what is more important is, after you've gone through all this, adapt to it, you have personal growth. You learn from your trauma. You learn from your mistakes. You learn from your negative past experience. So that's what we call resilient. You get growth from it. How? There are actually four things. Not so difficult. It's not a um, uh, uh, form-making process. It's a normal way of living. How to be resilient? This is uh, recommended by the American Psychological Association, one of the most famous uh, associations for psychologists. Four things, connection, wellness, healthy thinking, and meaning. I'm sure you have heard about these a lot. It's actually not so new. But what is new is how you apply to your life, okay? 
I'm using myself as an example. I so happy to tell all the people that I've only been back to the office five times since January till now. So I work from home all the time. So how many of you work from home in the past few months? Okay. Did you enjoy that? Probably at the beginning, huh? At the end, you become so bored and then you want to talk to people, right? So connection is important. So I reminded myself when I was at home all the time, I look through my phone and call up the people I haven't called them up for months or years. So I'm trying to reconnect with people. And I had more time using Facebook and whatever, so I become more careful of my Facebook friends. You know, Facebook friends are not real friends. Right? They're all just friends. So I make the effort to make them becoming more friends on my Facebook. So I try to reconnect with people. Okay, wellness. For, we have a psychology student here. Do you know who he is? John Carver Seymour. Have you heard about his name? He's one of the most famous uh, researchers on mindfulness. Okay, so he's one of the people who learned from the philosophy of Buddhism and meditation. But because he's a researcher, so he removed all the Buddhism theories from meditation and pushed mindfulness become a psychological prevention program. <coughs> it's becoming very famous. So during the lockup time, I spent weeks to complete the online course on meditation. And then I also learned from the Tsai Institute of how to do meditation. So what I've learned is you don't have to sit down and do meditation. You can do walking meditation. You can do eating mindfulness. You can do lots of mindfulness exercise while you are awaking. You don't have to sit down and meditate. Okay, so how many of you know this lady, Marie Kondo? She's very famous for Maya. Well, she's famous for packing up of boxes, but in our mind, we don't have boxes. But we have a lot of thinking over the places in our mind. So I took the time, reorganize my thinking and thoughts, make them more structural. Okay. In a psychological theory, um, we have things called tagging. Tagging means you have different tags in your mind about childhood, about adulthood, about furniture, about plants, about books, about music, about play. They're all interrelated from a perspective, but they're all over the place if you don't reorganize them into meaningful orders. Okay? So work from home give you should be able to give you some time to do a healthy thinking reorganization. Something didn't say it. It takes time. Though and one last thing to build up your resilience is to find meaning in whatever activities that you do. You can find meaning in sleeping. You can find meaning in eating. You can find meaning in walking. Or you can find meaning in connecting with people. Okay? I'm not joking. Some people eat for survival. Some people eat for Instagram. Some people eat for <laughs> whatever reasons. So not everyone is the same. So if you want to build up your resilient, find your meanings in your daily activities. <laughs> OK, so one last, two last um, slides. I think I'm over time. This is a project that I was involved with, with a group of wonderful volunteers in, on Changchao Island. This group of people, they form a community-based suicide prevention program when Changzhou was a famous place for suicide. So this group of people without any funding, they only use their goodwill, connect together and do something to prevent the suicides happening in Changzhou. It has become one of the most famous programs in the world. It doesn't involve a lot of people in terms of death, 
because well, Chongzhou is a small place, but it's actually the connection and the goodwill and the heart that they put together to make it successful. Now, when you think about this, Chongzhou has not been a famous place for suicide for quite some time. It just happened a few times last, last year, though. Okay, last slide. If you can find this wall, I will buy you a coffee. Uh, find this wall, it's in Tycoon. There are times, especially for young people too, there are times you want to look left, there are times you want to look right, because you have not decided where to go. But this also applies to people like us, adults. So it's okay if you are lost, if you are not sure where to go, stop, look and listen and relax for quite some time before you move on. It's okay to sit down and find out the meanings in life, to sit down and find the people who you are connected with, to reorganize your thinking and then move on. So it's okay to look left and look right and stop looking and stop looking and listen. So that's how you build up your resilience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Your sharing echo with me uh, on personal life and also my work life, especially the word uh, connection, why low? And I think it's time. I think this project with uh, cross cross disciplinary collaboration is also a kind of why low to get connection together and uh, find meaning of life in time of adversity. Thank you. And art, um, hope I had arts for young people uh, well-being. As its name, uh, we are talking about how art approach this topic. So coming next will be international sharing from UK and New Zealand. First will be uh, David sharing about her his idea and experience in the International Lost Child Project. And then will be the, uh, the experience from New Zealand the Conch, how a storytelling approach the topic of social change. Hi, my name is David Glass and welcome to the Lost Child Ilan celebration here at Taekwon Cultural Center. Um, and I want to welcome you all to this um, extraordinary event which has been organized by O Theater and all our wonderful partners with Jockey Club and um, um, Save the Children, all the many, many other partners who are bringing their young people to this project and also to all the artists, social workers, psychologists, teachers, and all the incredible organizational teams that have brought this event together. I'm so sorry not to be there with you actually, but also at the same time, this is a very exciting, in a way, experiment for us all. Um, the Lost Child was a project that I began with my company, the David Glass Ensemble, uh, back way back in 1997. Um, it has grown um, over the years from being um, a certain number of countries to, as I say, um, 25 countries around the world. The idea of it really was to um, have uh, marginalized children, children often in deprived backgrounds who are street children, who might be uh, traffic children sometimes, um, involved in telling stories, not necessarily always their own story, but actually the stories that are deep inside them, the myths that grow up inside them. We all have dreams, whether we live on the street or we live at home. Um, we all have dreams. In fact, we are the most extraordinary artists at nighttime when we dream. Um, and so it takes this idea of the myths that join us all together and explores that. And in so doing, we find the community um, outside of that myth as well. And these two things are a mirror of each other. So the lost child is about three areas. One is children who are actually lost. These could be street children. These could be uh, children in, in care, orphans, um, traffic children, sometimes children who um, basically don't live with their families at all, ever. Um, then there are uh, the lost child within homes. These can be children who are sometimes abused um, in emotionally uh, disruptive or difficult situations where there might be 
uh, domestic violence or domestic unease, um, might be sexual abuse, all sorts of things um, might be happening in, in these contexts. And then finally, the last level of lost child is a very important one. And this is the lost child that is lost inside often many adults. Many adults come to me over the years and have said, David, um, I am not an artist, but I really feel I want to connect to that which is creative, that which is seeing wonder in the world um, in which I feel my emotions and these things belong to me. Um, that I'm not just a consumer of uh, theatre or films or music, but I myself make these things. And so I believe very strongly that we are all born artists. What happens is we learn not to be artists. So returning, really, the lost child methodology returns children, young people, teenagers, and young adults, and all adults, to their creative selves. And in that creative self, they find all the beautiful, sometimes terrible, sometimes hilarious, sometimes tragic um, aspects of life. And it is like a beautiful weaving together of, of these. And when this is done in a safe environment, where we say yes and to each other, what if to each other, which are the two very important aspects of preparation in creativity, um, we can begin to originate, which is the second part of creativity, origination, coming up with ideas, saying yes and to each other, and what if. And then we organize these things into work and during this festival, you'll be seeing films and songs and drawings and dances and drama and storytelling. All of these different aspects are a little bit like nature. You will see many, many aspects of creativity in the arts. It reflects nature very well. And some are beautiful butterflies and some are um, uh, beautiful songbirds. So each in their own way. Um, I believe that the lost child, though, has a, a, another value, and that's the value of what we can say is, is dealing with specific difficulties in our specific time. And we began this project with the issue facing young people, which is that of youth suicide or mental health issues. And all over the world, this issue of mental health, um, depression, anxiety, worry, leading sometimes to tragic conclusions, is rising everywhere for many reasons. One is an unstable world. Uh, both natural in terms of the environment, but also emotionally in terms of the economic situation of people and the social situation of people. People are changing. But creativity gives us tools to grow resilience, to um, be agile, as they say these days, to be robust in the way we face the future. For me, to teach young people creativity is really to give them a, a spaceship for the future, a way of dealing with it. Um, and so this issue that brought us to it, which was mental health, has broadened. And this is now more to do with the idea of young people finding community and citizenship in a fast-changing world. When I speak of citizenship, I don't speak of it purely in a political sense. What I mean is to do with the sense of the civilizing aspects of humanity within um, a, a community, where we find our voice, our identity, where we're listened to, where we're loved, where we're nurtured. And the arts is a place and a way of doing that in a, in a, a beautiful and playful way. One of the things I say, and I think it's been taken up very much as a strap line for this festival, is in the arts, we do not solve problems. We play problems. But in that place of play, just like scientists, we can recreate or create the future, which is, can only be imagined at the moment. And I believe more than ever, we must give the young people the tools to imagine the future and they will then carry it forward. So The Lost Child is about citizenship as well as dealing with the traumas of the times we're living in. It's about community. Um, and in so doing, it enriches our lives. Um, people, uh, for instance, parents or people from society, uh, people, perhaps politicians, have a chance to sit back and listen to the voices of young people. And the one thing that young people don't always want to do is just achieve success. One of the greatest problems now is that we test young people at school all the time. And what that teaches them really is to conform or not to conform. But the arts, basically there's a place at the table for everyone in the arts. You 
everyone at some level can sing, everyone can dance, everyone can tell stories, everyone can paint and photograph. So it's not about being brilliant at these things, although often young people want to be good at these things, so they must learn the techniques. But more fundamentally, it gives them a voice, it gives them a place in the world, and it gives them a community of other young people. And we know, specifically for teenagers, peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, connection is a very important part. So I say the lost child is like a very holistic uh, medicine. Um, like all great stories or art, it's a medicine that we all take something from, a different thing from it. It creates a strong immune system uh, uh, for our mental health to connect with the world. Um, I think the specific issues that are facing people um, and young people in Hong Kong are specific to here, but also you will find are universal. So the lost child has always had a very local sensation and you will see all the people, almost all the people involved in this project are from Hong Kong. Um, and they are dealing with their young people and their context. But at the same time, the international, the Lost Child International, reaches out around the world, linking these young people as they are already linked to digitally. And this is a very important thing I want to talk about now, which is for young people's lives, the virtual medium is going to become more and more important. However, we must balance that with physical presence. The idea of being physically present with each other is, in its way, a miracle. Um, in other words, all of evolution has led for this moment, me speaking to you, to being in this room, although virtually with you, and that's a miracle. Also, this moment will never happen again. That's extraordinary too. And one day, uh, I won't be here to experience it with you. So this is something which is very special about the physical embodied presence with people. And that's what theatre, dance, the arts give us, this living, breathing, changing, transforming thing. And so the arts, society, young people, that's what The Lost Child is all about. And also about healing and finding identity. Kamenix will be the sharing from the conch. Isambul Vinaka, enak vakalevu to Olivia O Theatre Workshop and all at the Lost Child Project for the invitation to contribute to this symposium. In Nakavakalevu, David Glass, it's such an honour to be in your company as a theatre master and someone who's inspired me since my early 20s. We are living in a time of huge change. Some people say uncertainty, but as we know as creative people, that uncertainty is necessary to discovery. As the saying goes, we can't discover new lands unless we are prepared to lose sight of the shore. For myself, as a Pacific woman, the greatest potential for change lies with the Black Lives Matter movement. Injustice is insufferable and I can no longer tolerate it. And so I seek to make the truth visible, the injustice accountable. I speak my truth to power we bring the true story of history into the light in order that by facing the truth, the future may be rewritten. And so we step out of the uncertainty of a future that is prescribed into the uncertainty of the street, of activism, into the uncertainty of engagement. In other words, we start to create. I'm a theatre maker, and so I approach these changes through my work. My work is to tell stories, and I'm driven by a belief in the power of theatre to make social change. I believe change comes from shifting the way we see the world. When we change the story, we change the future. But what is the story we need to change? In the Pacific, it's the story of colonisation. Everything we do, 
Every aspect of the country we live in is driven by this story. From the street names, to the layout of a city plan, the architecture, to the statues of Captain Cook. The education system, the criminal justice system, the story I've heard since childhood. But whose story is this? New Zealand is a colonised country in the Pacific, and that process was driven by a story. People who told themselves they had the authority to tell the whole story, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help us God. The race of racism to call us Polynesian, Melanesian, Micronesian. Who is the author, I ask? The story is cut off from the teller. Who do I believe? I turn to my culture and my art form theatre. Culture, because in the Pacific, my story weaves me into the land, Vanua, Viti, a place, Tavuki Kandavu, through my father, Ratunoa Nawalawalo, to an unbroken line of people. Theatre, because the story is never cut off from the teller. We meet you face to face, on a real patch of ground, in real time, and have the courage to breathe the same air and to tell our truth. I need theatre silence stillness and listening. Quietly I ask myself what are the stories that need to be told? The answer is the stories that are hidden, buried under the layers of others' narratives. I choose to serve the unheard. To speak requires courage and there are reasons our stories are hidden, reasons our history is not taught in schools. To know my culture is to become conscious to value my truth, to stand for something and not just fall for anything, to realise that I can choose to activate my creativity, to know the facts is to become conscious. I live in a country that has one of the highest incarceration rates in the world. This story touches us all. A staggering 61.8 of New Zealand prisons population is Māori and Pacific Island. Of these, approximately 83% have been at some point in state care as children. Four out of five prisoners under 20 have been in state care, and currently there are 6,300 children in state care. What needs to be restored is the dignity, which continues to be daily systematically disrespected. In the Pacific, we have a word for this, mana. Mana recognises the sacred essence arising from a person's connection to the spiritual world. Mana is not an achievement. Mana is gifted from a spiritual source. Land, water, sacred objects, all of these have mana. For the conch, mana reflects a state of reverence and regard for each other that is sacred in terms of relationships. In all our dealings, we aspire to take care, to form relationships, which have respect and they build mana. We build mana, we acknowledge, nourish and recognise the mana of others, or we can disrespect, diminish and belittle others. We are mana vanua, people whose sacred essence rises from the land. The land was not lost, it was taken. The conscious process draws on traditional values. The program's key point of difference is that it is delivered to Māori and Pacific Island youth, led by myself, a Pacific woman. The conscious process begins in schools and community groups with young people aged 13 to 16. We often begin with a workshop in schools by asking students, what are schools full of? Their answer nine times out of ten is students. We answer true, but for us schools are full of the future of this country. The statement often brings a silence to the room as the group realises the truth in this. They realise that what they do, the choices they make, their actions in the now can shape what the future will be. They realise they have the power to create not just a character, scene or a play, but, to sh but the shape of things to come. This acknowledges their mana. In the Pacific, the source of our story is the land, the water, the sea, our ancestral house, the fari, the bure. In the moment in the school hall, 
All of that is represented by the student body. We ask them, whose house is this? They realise that though this is their house, they do not always feel at home, not just in the building, but in their own bodies. Their house has been occupied. So how do I reclaim the sovereignty of my own body? How do I reclaim connection to the space above, the space below? How can I feel at home in the building? How can I inspire strength in myself and my companions? For young people to come into relationship, their mana must be uplifted. No mutual learning is possible without this. I do not wish a young person to submit to my authority, but to feel the value of their story, the lines of people they represent, the dignity of their culture. By saying to young people, you are the future, you are placing them in a proper relationship to the present. You are saying, you are a tonga, sacred treasures. The second level of conscious carries forward young people from the ages of 16 to 18 into the conscious youth theatre. While workshops with young people may take two hours, it also could take up to two weeks. An example of this workshop was delivered in partnership with the National Museum of Te Papa in Wellington. Like many museums around the world, Te Papa houses a large collection of Māori and Pacific objects. While for some these objects belong to the past or the world of anthropology, the truth is they have often been taken. For us they are tonga, alive with mana, they have a life story. By working with the curators of Māori and Pacific collections, we negotiated access to the storerooms of the museum for a group of 20 young people. To go into their backstage areas was really special. We asked the curators to select objects to which they felt a special connection and to tell their story. To see the human connection was intensely moving both for us and the curators. Through working with the skills of object animation, we encouraged the participants to tell their story, to bring the objects and their stories to life. From there we asked the young people to think of an object that for them is sacred, to bring it into the space and to share its story. We invited the curators to come and listen. It was an immensely moving day where we wept and laughed and as the treasures of human truth were revealed. The museum respected the manner of the youth, the objects were respected and the curators were respected. We gifted the sacred treasures of our stories to the public and the audience gave back to the young people their response. Mana at that presence is in all aspects of the moment. The next level of conscious is internship, which can happen between the ages of 18 to 25. Each of our major productions serve as vehicles to advance young people. An intern is attached to as many of the different roles as possible. In one of our productions, Mussy, which was commissioned by the New Zealand International Arts Festival, we took on seven interns in areas from producing, lighting, backstage and performance. This is not simply about upskilling. The key is the experience of being inside the process, being held inside the family of the company and going on the journey. The intern experience is their value in serving, holding and enabling the work. The professional company experienced the value of their strength in holding and enabling the intern who work together, eat together, and while on tour, live and travel together. Connections are made, pathways emerge, seen and unforeseen outcomes. The intern is drawn into the process through work and drawn out of the process through guided reflection. This makes the work conscious. The third phase of conscious is mentorship. This mentorship happens between the ages of 18 to 30 and is offered to four emerging artists each year. This process is designed to support the emergence of leadership. For example, I did a year-long mentorship with Tavita Nelson Mamia. Tavita had written a play, it was the world's first Tuvaluan play, Ko'au Tuvalu. It is the voice of the island Tuvalu, which is disappearing under the rising tide of global warming. My job was to support and advance this creative process as a writer, director and producer, 
and moreover to accompany him as he toured to a, another centre in New Zealand to ensure that the organisation met him, his team and community properly with dignity and mana. We are living in a time of huge change, a change in which we need to be active, in which our success as Pacific people is not only desirable but essential to the well-being of the planet. Leaders do not emerge from nowhere, they are the product of conscious intergenerational action for change. Each and every one of us has a story and each of our stories is interwoven into the bigger story. Changing our story, living it, changes the story of the whole. To work with young people is essential for me as it keeps me young, it keeps my mind open, keeps me connected to the present, to the ways of expression, technologies, thinking, which will expand the boundaries of what theatre is. Working with young people keeps me conscious. Naka, naka, naka bakalev. It's truly heartwarming um, when watching these two videos that I feel on, I believe maybe you also feel their passions and love to trust to young people. In order to approach uh, youth mental well-being, this topic, I believe it is also important to know the situation in Hong Kong. So may I now invite uh, uh, Mr. Virgil from Save the Children to zoom the lens back to the data of Hong Kong. Thank you. Thanks very much. <clears throat> so it's really my pleasure to be here today and an honor to be among uh, this audience and the other speakers. I think we've seen some really incredible and beautiful examples of what we can do. Uh, and I hope that what my presentation is now going to offer is just a little bit of understanding is uh, what are we trying to work with? What is the, the problem that we're trying to, to support? So, uh, so thanks for having me for this conversation. I'm, uh, I'm Virgil and I support research and evaluation at Save the Children Hong Kong. And I work to make sure that our projects are designed based on good research and that they have the best chance at making a big improvement in the lives of children. So that's my job. Save the Children Hong Kong is a, it's part of a global children's organization working to help children in Hong Kong and around the world to survive, learn, and be protected. Uh, we work with partners to look for solutions to issues like youth and child mental health uh, that can be scaled up and implemented across all of Hong Kong. So who is our work all about? Well, meet Helen and Harry. These are some participants in the Lost Child Project that we uh, partnered with, uh, with, uh, with O Theatre and with David Glass and everybody on it to, to really produce something unique. So these are the young people that really our work is all about. And before I tell you about uh, what they said about their experience in the Lost Child Project. Let me just give you a bit more information on the background of the situation uh, that we have in Hong Kong today. So the Hong Kong Children's Happiness Index, which is an annual survey of, of children's well-being, uh, has showed that happiness has declined after 2013 and in 2019 has still not fully recovered. We saw a 53% rise in Hong Kong student suicides between 2012 and 2016 and upward trends after that, which is really uh, warranting significant concern. Surveys in 2019 found that 30% of primary school children and 51% of secondary school children in Hong Kong may be experiencing symptoms of depression during the recent social and political turmoil. So very recently things are looking like they're getting worse. The temporary isolation created by the coronavirus school suspension has also had an impact on children's mental health with, uh, with a sur our survey showing that 16% of children are, have no contact with friends at all during the four months of school suspension. So not even on social media, text message or, as, or anything like that. Complete social isolation for four months. Probable depression and suicidal ideation in Hong Kong has also shown an upwards trend over the years. Uh, we can look at the red line here showing you uh, back to 2011, we've had a continuous increase in the general population uh, that, that, that is uh, affected by probable depression. Likewise, suicidal ideation has followed along on that trend. Child and youth suicide rates in Hong Kong have also seen an upwards trend in recent years. 
And in consultation with uh, experts in the field here in, uh, in Hong Kong, we've, uh, we've also heard that there's an expectation that in 2019, these figures are going to be uh, significantly up as well. So you can see the top line here in purple. This is for children age, uh, young people age 15 to 24, where we see the, the biggest impact on uh, child suicides in recent years. Uh, the green line is for children under age 15. So why does Save the Children think that we need artists and alternative solutions to support youth mental health in Hong Kong? Now, don't we have health services? Are there not already uh, professionals working to provide the kind of clinical services that, that people need? Well, there was an increase of over 50% in the child and youth psychiatric uh, team caseload uh, between, uh, between 2011 and 2016. It's a, a significant increase, 50% extra work but almost none of these new cases were related to depression or anxiety, which we know has been increasingly common. The simple fact is that those children and young people with depression and anxiety are simply not seeking and receiving the help that they need, whether from primary or tertiary care professionals. Based on projections from a recent HKU med study, a ballpark estimate of the children who may need clinical psychiatric services for depression, anxiety, and PTSD could actually put the service need at as much as 300% higher than the hospital authority's regular caseload. Does that sound manageable to you? That's a big, that's a big problem. So we consulted uh, members of the community, young people, and we asked them uh, what are their, their concerns and their thoughts around youth mental health in Hong Kong. Young people told us that self-harm is common among their female classmates who post self-harm images on social media. They also said that they don't, they don't think that suicide prevention talks, which have been happening at their schools, they don't think that they're very useful. And they, they really feel that they have no relief from the academic and family pressure that they face. We talked to, uh, to, to school teachers as well. They told us that students won't tell their teacher even if they're suffering from emotional distress. They choose not to talk about it. They don't think that you're someone that they can totally trust, or they just don't know how to determine if, if they can trust you. So this issue of actually now we're facing significantly reduced trust in public service providers, really puts young people at a much greater risk if they have mental health, uh, mental health issues. So what we're really seeing is the tip of the iceberg for people who are seeking and receiving help is the, the problem is really much, much larger. So just take a moment and think about uh, the young people that you know or see day to day. It could be in your, the course of your work as a social worker or as a teacher, it could be the peers in your classroom, Think for a moment about those young people. Half of them might be experiencing depression and anxiety and not getting the kind of support they need. Drama and the arts can support youth mental health. Quite simply, we need more lost child projects. Drama and the arts projects like this can reduce mental health stigma and promote youth mental well-being and help children and young people better understand and communicate their emotions and ultimately can improve their ability to manage their feelings of distress. This is especially true, I think, if mental health self-care training is incorporated into the, the arts program. But ultimately, there is, there is a benefit that comes from arts. We need more of this. So some of the, uh, the young people spoke to us about their experience in the Lost Child Project. I think they, their, their, their comments are really insightful. So Jojo told us that, particularly for me, I think it's really hard to understand myself. But through the workshop, I've learned something about myself. I'm, I'm always trying just to keep reserve to, uh, to, and I knew that before too. But now, the workshop showed me why and what I could do to stop that. So talking about being able to open up, to share their emotions. This was a really big change for a lot of the participants in the Lost Child uh, workshop, to be able to have a way to communicate their feelings when they didn't feel they could before. Yao told us that in the workshop, we could reflect on ourselves with music in the background. We were able to think more positively and can sense our feeling, what our feelings are at the moment. It was good. I can understand more about myself. I think this is a really important takeaway as well. Being able to reflect and understand oneself, understand your feelings, gives you a little bit better ability to control them and to, and to manage them. Helen, who you might remember from, from the beginning of this, uh, this presentation, one of the participants uh, said that when I'm setting things happen, I can talk to my mother and other family members and not just keep things inside myself. So a real big takeaway for me for, for what uh, was a significant impact for the young people from their perspective 
was understanding their feelings, understanding how to communicate their emotions and to connect with other people in their life to talk about their emotions, which is so, so critical. Who can benefit the most from this kind of activity? Young people who participated in the Lost Child Project generally felt more connected to other people and had a measurable improvement in their well-being. Those youth that we assessed at the beginning of the, of the workshop who had a low well-being status were actually more likely to see a positive change in their well-being than youth with a moderate well-being status. So there was a significant impact in particular for these, for these youth who are in a diff more difficult situation. But you really don't need to look far for evidence that art therapy can help people with depression and anxiety. A number of academic articles and clinical trials have shown that it works, and I will argue that it's an extremely important asset for people working with young people here in Hong Kong, like what we're doing at Save the Children and with the Lost Child Project. So youth mental health is a big problem, and solving it will require big solutions. But most big solutions start out small. So remember, right now, there's a, there may be as many as 277,000 school children that have been significantly negatively affected by the social and political turmoil in Hong Kong. That's equivalent to about 39% of all primary and secondary school students. All right, this is a big number. So let's think big and start small. I'd like to see the Lost Child Project or any drama and art therapy activity running in every school and community center in Hong Kong. Save the Children is launching a new mental health program in Hong Kong this year, partnering with 10 other well-known youth and child mental health uh, focused organizations. And if you or anyone you know is interested in learning more about our services and projects that can be done at your school, please do contact us. Thanks very much. Thank you, uh, Zhao. Thank you. As one of the participants of the Lost Child Project, I remember uh, Saturday I talked to David. I wish I can um, borrow what I learned from the workshops into life because lots of accents really applicable in life uh, in face of adversity. So are you feel curious what the Lost Child Project Hong Kong did and how, it, uh, how David led us to return, as he said, return to our creative self and explore different aspects of life? So let me introduce the artistic director of Lost Child Project, Olivia Yan, and uh, Dorothy Wong, project director, come on stage. Hello, Joy. <laughs> I'm Olivia. Okay. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You actually, to... uh, it's very interesting that before the project at uh, Tycoon, actually in 2019, uh, 2019, actually we have three rounds of workshop, which were led by uh, David uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, Elaine and I and many artists actually were the students of David. And uh, in the workshop, actually, we learn how to be creative. So, Olivia, we will talk to you later. We will change channel. Change channel. Okay, change Chinese, it's easier for everyone to be able to do it. Okay, okay. 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 喺二零一八年嘅時候，咁我諗大家都會好記得喺香港嗰時候咧，就有好多關於年青人同埋甚至係細路仔兒童嘅自殺嘅個案嘅。咁嗰時咧，都好多報紙啦，好多媒體都報導呢件事咁。咁我自己本身係一個誒媽媽啦，咁亦都係一個嘅誒劇場工作者。咁我就接觸好多年青人。咁我以前亦都做好多關於兒童誒兒童劇嘅。咁所以咧，我每次我聽到啲新聞嘅時候，其實我係好難受嘅。咁我覺得點解一個即係、就是、一個年青人，佢點解我哋嘅社會點解會令到啲年青人係咁快樂嘅咧？究竟個問題喺邊度咧？咁我記得喺二零一八年嘅年頭嗰陣時，咁我有個朋友，咁佢係心理學家何念慈，咁佢係好好朋友嚟嘅。有一日咧，佢就打電話俾我，佢就問我，佢話 ：Olivia， 你覺得藝術可以做啲乜嘢嘢？佢話劇場係可以做到啲乜嘢嘢咁，咁我喺嗰陣時候其實我係答唔到佢
，因為、呃、我覺得我唔係呢方面嘅專家。咁我一路都喺度諗啊，係有冇啲嘢可以做呢？咁、呃、我雖然都做好多，即係、呃、我做 workshop 嘅時候，因為我都教好多唔同學生，有年青人，有成年人，有細路仔咁。咁但係咧，一直以嚟我都發覺誒、呃、戲劇同埋藝術咧，佢有好大嘅 power， 因為佢唔係淨係透過講啊，即係佢唔係淨係透過語言去表達。好多時候佢係透過你嘅參與啦，你嘅身體啦，誒好多時係無意識地咧，其實佢已經做咗啲嘢，甚至係解決咗某啲問題。咁我覺得係起碼呢樣嘢喺我嘅即係咁多年嘅藝術嘅工作嘅生涯裏面咧，我發覺我好明白呢樣嘢嘅 power 究竟喺邊，佢嘅力量喺邊一度咁。咁誒、呃、到到喺我即係誒頭先講我啊何念慈打電話俾我之後呢，咁我就遇返我老師 David Glass， 咁好開心啦。咁啊、呃、突然間呢，我就諗起佢依有佢有個 project 喺一九九七年嗰陣時候，其實佢嚟過香港誒、呃、帶咗一個嘅 workshop。咁佢我誒、呃、我記得佢嗰時同我講，佢就呢個嘅啊 Lost Child Project 呢，佢就啱啱 start 冇幾耐。咁呢，佢就喺、呃、除咗喺歐洲其他地方之外，亦都去到第三世界嘅地區，即係可能嘅柬埔寨啊、越南啊、菲律賓咁地區呢，去同啲唔同嘅機構、唔同嘅細路仔、年青人去工作咁。咁我記得當時呢，我係一個觀眾嚟嘅。咁喺文化香港文化中心尖沙咀嗰度，我睇呢個演出嗰陣時，其實我係好震撼嘅。咁、呃、到我突然間喺上年我見返嗰時候呢，我諗起呢個 project， 我就話你可唔可以？誒嚟香港，我哋一齊睇下 Lost Child Project 可以喺香港做到啲乜嘢嘢，可唔可以帶動一啲我哋嘅 artist 可以做到一啲嘢咁？咁後來咧，同一時間咧，其實我好多時候就遇到好多唔同 artist， 我同佢討論呢一個嘅 project 嘅時候咧，其實我發覺好多人都好有心嘅嚇喺咩喺藝術界裏邊，我哋其實好 artist 係一啲好好誒，其實好關心我哋嘅世界，好關心人。好關心人嘅精神健康，好關心人嘅心靈嘅誒誒質素嘅誒係咯嘅工作嘅。咁所以咧，我喺嗰陣時，我發覺我哋係個個誒做啊做啊做啊，好啊我哋做啊咁。咁但係發覺好多我哋係唔係好識得點樣做，或者係咪做得啱咧？係咪因為其實我哋講緊一個係年青人精神嘅健康問題，講緊自殺問題，我哋。識唔識得做咧？我哋會唔會踩過界咧？我哋會去到一啲嘅位置係係其實係收唔到嘅咧？其實我哋自己都唔識處理咧咁。咁我跟住咧，我就、呃、邀請 David 嚟嗰時候，我話我哋一定要 involve 一啲嘅社工啦，一啲專業嘅人士啦，一一啲啊心理學家啊，誒誒誒 drama therapist 啦，誒學校嘅社誒學校啦，老師啦，社工等等。咁跟住我哋就開展咗上年就開展咗三個嘅 workshop。咁就一月有一個啦，五月有一個啦，跟住就十月有一個啦咁。咁跟住我喺個過程裏面，咁大家都知道喺香港上年其實佢都經歷好多嘅誒唔同嘅階段，成個香港其實都好多嘅震動啦咁。咁我哋嘅誒我哋成個 project 亦都係隨住香港嘅社會嘅嘅情況，我哋一路喺度轉變緊。咁我記得去到十月嗰陣時候咧。差唔多要搞啊！啲十二月嚟嗰陣時候，咁我就同我多謝講，我哋搞唔搞啊？我仲做唔做？因為嗰時其實我覺得我好似好氣餒，即係好辛苦啊！見到即係喺成個成個誒社會嘅事件裏邊咁。咁跟住咧，我好記得誒，我身邊嘅 Dorothy 同埋我哋嘅 Core Team 就同我講一，佢就講一樣好好重要説話。佢話冇人知道出路係點嘅，重要嘅係我哋一齊行。唔係邊個帶邊一個，我哋一齊行。我哋 once 我哋行咧，我哋就會知道條路點樣走。咁其實好大嘅鼓舞嘅。咁同一時間咧，我亦都係誒誒問阿 David，David 亦都講一樣嘢。佢話：哇，正啊，好啊，就係、是、呢個時候，藝術先係需要做嘢嘅時候，我一定要嚟。咁當。我哋喺十二月嗰時做啲 workshop 嘅時候，但係頭先有啲影片都見到，我哋就誒同一啲年青人一齊做，有我哋有社工啦，我哋有學校老師啦、drama therapist 啦等等嘅時候，其實我見到嗰個集結嘅力量啊！咁誒、呃，然之後我就喺誒、呃，其實喺上年嘅誒年中嘅時候，其實我亦都誒揾、呃、到大館啊啊誒誒 Eddie 啦。呃咁誒，佢亦都好 support 我哋呢個計劃。咁所以咧，我哋就本來係諗住就今年嘅四月咧，我哋就會有一個嘅誒、呃，我哋嘅 Elon 嘅誒 Hong Kong project 嘅
。咁但係咧，就因為疫情關係，我哋又褪到六月啦。咁但係本來咧，我哋呢個 project 咧，亦都係誒，全部都係實體嘅嘅。嘅嘅 festival 好似 festival 咁嘅演嘅嘅唔同嘅演出，咁但係英亦都一疫情嘅問題嘅時候，咁啊啊 Eddie 就問我，佢話 Olivia， 我哋可唔可以變成 online 嘅一個嘅活動咧？咁咁當時咧，其實我係唔知點算嘅。咁但係佢有一樣嘢咧，佢就好誒、呃、鼓勵到我，就同我講話，佢話其實嚟緊咧，我哋都要知道點樣同個世界。嘅呢個 trend 呢個嘅科技去融合嘅時候，點解我哋唔行第一步咧？咁咁亦都係同一時間，我就諗到一樣嘢，就係、是、David 佢都講，亦都係我哋呢個 project 成個嘅嘅嘅 slogan 就係、是、We do not solve problems, we play problems。即係所有嘅問題嚟嘅時候，我哋唔係淨係尋求一個解決方法，而係我哋點樣演繹嗰啲問題。Once 我哋有一個咁嘅心態去諗，我哋點樣去演繹嘅時候，其實。我哋就可能有更加多嘅可能性會走到出嚟，咁所以喺嗰陣時候，我哋就決定嗯，同 Dorothy 講好啦，亦都係同我哋嘅 core team 講，我哋就 take 呢個 challenge。咁我哋之後，我哋就喺今日同埋我哋誒、呃、早兩日，我哋真係做咗呢個嘅有 online 有 offline， 亦都有 live stream 嘅呢個嘅嘅 festival。Yeah. Actually, it's very, it is very interesting that. In the in the past two years, actually, we 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 are not targeting to do anything about the、uh, COVID nineteen or anything else. Actually,、uh, we would、uh, would like to do something for the、uh, mental health issue for the young people because in around two to three years ago, there were a lot of、uh, youth suicide problem, and after that, actually,、uh, during the past one year, Hong Kong has、uh, many things happened, and we would like to know how much. Uh, we can go further, and how much we can do more, so that we can use art. Actually, art in a, is a very,、uh, very good tool、uh, from a drama th therapist angle or、um, from an art engagement perspective. Art actually is a symbol.、Uh, symbol is a very good tool.、Uh, can be interpreted in many different way and can. Be a very useful communication tool. So,、um, actually, in the whole project, we have developed two very symbolic、uh, story series. Nine. <laughs> one is my story land, and our and other one is our social land. 咁我哋呢两个 series 咧系私密故事系列啦，同埋我们的系列啦。点嚟啊？我哋其实喺餐厅度倾出嚟嘅，好似。<笑>我哋兩個坐喺度喺度拗緊頭啊，就係揸住支筆啦，點咧諗咩咧，點玩法咧？跟住阿 Livia 又講下。誒、呃，我覺得好緊要，因我記得喺誒、呃、我哋上 workshop 嗰時候咧，嘅 David 講過一個三角形。咁一個三角形咧，係一個 artist 應該要誒、呃，我哋嘅 work 點樣出現咧，就係、是、有一個角落，有一個角咧，三角形一個角咧，就係講緊 I， 即係我啦。誒、呃，另外一個角咧就係、是、world， 即係個世界。咁另最後嗰三角嗰、那個角落咧就係、是、個 work。咁佢就話：藝術家咧就其實係 I world 同埋 work。咁所以咧，我我覺得 inspire from 佢呢個三角形啦，我哋就係開始諗啊，我哋嘅嗰個誒、um, my story land 咧，其實我哋就係希望每一個人可以投一個由一個 I 即係我嘅角度去講一個關於你嘅故事，然之後就做一個 work。簡單嚟講 ，our social land 就係由 world 即係一個社群唔同嘅社群啦，例如可能學校係一個社群啦，即係家庭一個社群啦。誒、uh, 年青人一個社群啦，老人家一個社群，有個社群裏邊去點樣去睇一個個人嘅身份，然之後做一個 work。咁喺誒裏邊，其實大家都係講緊故事，因為誒、呃、劇場就係講故事嘅地方。我諗劇場一個好一個好叻講故事嘅地方。咁所以我覺得，而每個人其實我哋誒、呃、每個唔係淨係劇作家有故事，唔係淨係演員有故事，唔係淨係藝術家有故事。其實每個人嘅故事都係咁獨特。冇得比較，邊一個人嘅故事係啊？你嘅故事就好啲，或者我嘅故事就傷心啲。你嘅眼淚又流得多過我，或者你嘅憤怒又大過我。其實每一個故事都係屬於嗰個人佢嘅自身佢嘅感受嘅嘢。如果我哋每個人嘅故事係能夠可以講到出嚟俾人聽，而每一個人亦都有咁嘅胸襟去聽人哋嘅故事嘅時候，我覺得呢個本身亦都係一個藝術。嘅同時，亦都一個增進大家互相之間溝通一個好重要嘅途徑。而我相信故事一個好大嘅 power 就係故事其實係有一個空間嘅，即係話從前啊小明咧就係咧誒
好乖嘅，或者阿小明咧有一日咧就呃咗阿 Dorothy 兩蚊咁。咁嗰個小明係邊個咧？那個小明可以係小明，那個小明亦可都可以係你，可以係你,你想象嘅某一個人。可以係你身邊熟悉嘅人，咁所以故事有一個好大嘅想像空間，咁令到人係有一種距離，而呢種距離就係我哋唔需要淨係透過語言去話俾你聽，去教訓你去有道理，而係嗰個空間就係俾人能夠消化，同埋有人去,去可以去容納佢自己投入自己嘅情感嘅世界嘅地方。咁所以我諗故事嘅 power 喺劇場裏面係最重要嘅。咁所以我哋喺 our social life 同埋 my story 量裏面咧，我哋就着重係點樣去講故事，係由個人去講故事，或者係由個社群去講個故事咁。So maybe it's the time to invite our my story land、yes. creative team to talk about how they create their story. Ah,、uh, KJ, Kelly, Jackie, Hartow, Tim, Ingrid, please come forward and be seated. Yes, 好開心。咁我哋亦都誒呢一個環節，我哋有啊，我哋嘅 translation 係咪啊 ？Chris， 快啲中間中間。Hey, Chris, 我諗最、okay. 坐低一啲。<笑>我諗最重要咧，誒、呃、artist 係最重要嘅。我哋喺我哋嘅 work 裏邊，唔係我哋自己喺度講自吹自擂，或者我哋後邊嘅工作人員做幾多嘢。最重要就係 artist 佢哋 work 同埋佢哋真係經歷咗。啲乜嘢嘢？咁我諗咧，誒、呃、呢度咧，其實有幾多 group 咧？一二三 group 喺度嘅。咁咧有一 group 咧就係啊啊，係、呃、啦、呃，即係三 group 啦，一二三。OK， 介紹下你哋做緊啲乜嘢先好嘛？咁不如你各自介紹下你嗰做做嘅你嘅 work 係乜嘢先好嘛？咁由你先啦。Hello， 大家好，我係 Kelly Jackie 陳曉琪 KJ。咁啊 ，Hello， 大家好。咁我嘅嗰個 art piece 就係叫做。來一場用耳朵寫的音樂會 ，Once Upon a Starry Starry Night, a Writable Music Journal 嘅。係，我係阿 Tim， 咁我就整一條片，就叫做扎。叫做。係，我係 Ingrid， 咁我就係同阿 Net， 即係唐詩詠去合作啦，去畫咗一條片去講佢嘅故仔。咁我哋個作品咧叫《最後的那一瞬間》。咁啊，我講少少先啦。咁佢哋三個咧都係誒唔同嘅，好多嚟自好唔同嘅 background。咁今次其實個 project 好有趣嘅，即、就、係、是、我簡單嚟講，譬如講，我首先講阿 Ingrid 嗰個啦，同阿阿唐詩詠嘅嗰個 project 啦。咁呢個 project 咧，其實係誒，因為我諗住揾三個唔同嘅誒、呃、類型嘅藝術形式去表達嘅。咁啊，唐詩詠係一個演員啦，啊，咁然之後咧，咁佢咧就揾咗 Ingrid 咧，就去用一個。動畫嘅形式，其實係畫畫形式，然之後做咗一條片，就是、一個動畫去講一個佢 personal 童年嘅故仔嘅。咁如果大家有興趣，可以上網<笑>去睇翻我哋嘅 work 啦。咁但係有趣嘅咧，就係因為 Ingrid 係一個年青人，佢仍然係讀緊書喺成大。誒、呃，下個月畢業。係係係係，成大。咁佢亦都係嚟參與我哋嘅 workshop 嘅時候咧，就我哋嘅 mix and match 啦，就係、是、一個年青人同一個 artist 一齊咁樣 work out 嘅。咁佢哋就做咗一條片嘅，咁啊呢、這個就係、是、一陣間就講再講下咧，好冇？咁好啦，阿 Tim 咧就真係真真正正框框聲嘅年青人嚟嘅，真係廿廿廿幾歲，廿二歲咩？係啦，咁就代學中係咪？失業代學中，係啦，佢係失業嘅就代、是、學中。咁誒，咁佢咧亦都係誒做誒做咗一條片，係有成幾幾耐二十分鐘，而佢第一次去自己策劃曬成件事嘅。咁係好犀利嘅，誒係啊，咁誒大家亦都有興趣可以上翻我哋網站度，到聽日都仲有得睇嘅。咁啊 ，Kelly Jackie 咧就誒係一個歌手啦。咁所以我嗰時開頭諗咧，我其實係唔係純粹因為喂，我快啲揾到歌手嚟做一個屈，而係我因為我知道佢經歷咗一段好長嘅一個 depression 嘅時候嘅。咁誒，佢亦都其實佢哋全部邀嚟上啊 David 嘅堂嘅。咁咁我就誒我就話你可唔可以用？你嘅經歷用音樂去講一個關於你個人嘅故事，係你點樣 go through 你嗰個 depression 嘅時候咧咁，咁所以佢就也一口應承，咁所以一陣間又講下你 work 啦咁，咁就阿蝦頭咧就誒點解喺度咧？就係佢係幫手去一齊去引入呢幾個 project 嘅，咁所以誒係啦，咁嗱時間交俾你哋啦，咁阿蝦頭嚟啦，去同佢哋傾下偈啦。<笑><笑>
誒係啦，誒、uh, uh, 我哋今次喺 Lost Joy Project 裏邊咧有一個嘅系列就叫做 My Story 靈嘅系列啦。咁我就係負責呢一三個 project， 即係呢三個誒誒誒 piece 誒、uh, 一個誒、um, 負責幫佢哋去孕育同埋創作嘅一個 facilitator 啦。因為我哋喺 David 嘅 workshop 裏邊就係學咗呢一樣嘢嘅。咁我自己非常之開心，就係話我哋呢三 group 人誒。Um, 一齊由 workshop 開始慢慢認識，到真係要去做創作嘅時候，誒、呃、點樣由零開始生啲嘢出嚟？誒、呃、每個人都遇到佢哋嘅困難，或者將佢哋嘅 story 點樣佢哋嘅即係自己同佢哋生命裏邊好近嘅誒、呃、一啲故事點樣同我哋大家分享？咁我就好記得我用咗 David workshop 裏邊嘅一啲好好正嘅方法啦，就係、是、what if 同埋 yes and 嘅咁啊。你哋分享下成個過程裏邊，你哋由即係點樣去即係生到而家呢個 B B 出嚟啦，係啊。誒，咁我嗰個本身咧，其實唔係而家大家見到嘅咁樣嘅，因為最早我哋十月我得到誒 Olivia 老師邀請咧，其實係我哋四月就要誒公開地去做一個演出，咁其實我哋可以籌備嘅時間係短短兩三個月。咁而呢一種藝術嘅認識嘅舞台表演對我嚟講係極度陌生嘅，咁所以好彩有哈頭陪住我一齊 co-create。但係當我嚟開始用 yes and 同埋 what if 去生咗一個初型嘅時候，突然之間就個疫情轉變啦，咁我哋就不能有一個現場嘅演出，要改為延遲去到六月。亦都唔肯定究竟係一個現場定 online 嘅，我哋嗰陣時咁，所以喺我哋呈現出嚟嘅 art form 又要去再諗過一個全新嘅版本。咁但係呢一個正正，我覺得就好似誒、呃、Lost Child Project 嘅主題就係、是、lost 同 found 係相輔相成，就等於我哋感覺到痛苦，同樣都因為我哋曾經感覺快樂，所以你先會覺得失去咗有種痛。咁所以我就係阿哈亦都好好係繼續抌我出公海，叫我係啦，你轉入去多啲，感受多啲，所以先形成我決定去變成由一個 program 變成一個六日嘅一個旅程，就係、是、我自己過去嘅 lost and found 嘅旅程，同埋我亦都覺得人生就好似一個摩天輪。就係、是、我哋好多 ups and down， 但係我哋好難去避免喺呢啲高高低低嘅跌宕。但係究竟我哋點樣可以喺入邊去享受呢一個摩天輪嘅 ride 係我哋嘅選擇，我哋係可以選擇嘅。咁所以我就透過嗰五日寫信，誒、呃、作為同自己過去嘅內在小孩嘅一啲溝通啦，去到第六日就係、是、一個音樂會嘅形式。咁所以希望大家如果有興趣去了解多啲，可以。重新睇一次，同埋嗰件事係好得意，係封信我寫完出嚟，原來每每條片都三十幾分鐘，我有啲嚇親嘅，就得，因為誒、呃、我就問阿哈點算啊？寫第一個 draft 寫完第一封信都三十幾分鐘啊，點算？咁但係蝦頭好好，佢會話誒呢一個正正就係嗰個 lost 去到 found 嘅嗰個每個人嘅經歷嘅時間咯，係啦，所以就係希望大家誒、呃、可以。睇下呢一個好特別嘅另一面嘅 KJ。I forget him. So、um, Hato's、uh, role in this project is、uh, she, gui she guided these three、uh, creators to finish their projects. And、um, during the creation of KJ's project, she went through a, a lot of processes. Like、um, when it first started, it is not what it is right now. Because at first it was intended to be a live、uh, performance, and right now, because of COVID,、um, it transformed into a video instead. And、um, during this whole creation process, she went through、um, like a lot of ups and downs, like a roller coaster ride. And then she thought about David's concept of being lost and then found. Because at times during the creation process, she was lost, but then she was found. And then she also followed、um, Harriet's advice on、um, actually it was David's concept of、um, what if and yes and. Uh, to explore the ideas of her project. Uh, I think I want to say, um, I won't tell my own story. What? Ah, um, everyone can go and watch it. Ah, um, actually, I want to share is as a young person, why I want to pull back is the impact of music on young people. I think it's very important because 
。其實冇人預計過我要做一條咩片，或者大家冇 expect 過條片會係點樣。而喺創作過程入邊，好多都係我自己不停咁揾自己想講啲咩，或者用一個乜嘢方式去表達。我諗呢個係。最影響到我嘅事情，而亦都可以令到我舒服地去講我自己想講嘅嘢，因為其實係冇 expectation 噶嘛，你又唔知我想講咩，然後其實我都唔係好知我自己想講咩，但係呢個 process 入邊，我反而開更多 possibility 係我可以點樣講，或者其實我最尾講到嘅時候，大家 get 唔 get 到 message 係第二回事，反而我只需要好 focus 地專注。我呢個 craft 究竟係做唔做到我想講嘅嘢咧？然後表唔表達到自己嘅 voice？ 我諗呢個比起出嚟嘅 outcome 對我嚟講重要好多，而亦都對於年輕人嚟計，我可以揾到自己嘅 ground 去創造一啲嘢。呢、这個 accomplishment 係大過究竟出到嚟佢靚唔靚，因為嗰個 process 係屬於我。而呢個 process 最尾個 outcome 大家覺得中意，咁當然係一件好事啦。但係更加重要嘅係，我喺呢個作品入邊建立到我自己點睇呢個世界，而大家亦都會有呢個空間去願意望一望我所呈現緊嘅嘢究竟係咩嘅時候，我諗呢個機會係難得，而亦都係對年輕人成長階段、尋找自我嘅階段嚟講係一個非常重要嘅關口，所以。艺术好重要咯，而大家一定要支持艺术同埋支持年轻人咯。<笑>我谂我嘅重点就系咁咯，系呢个先最重要啊嘛，系咪？好，交俾 Ingrid 啦。<笑> so um Tim thinks it's very important to support the arts. When、uh, he was asked to make a video, um he wasn't given any instructions or rules, and um、uh, in this free space that he was allowed to roam in, he um he had a free um process to、uh, to create. And then,、um, in this free、uh, creation process,、um, he could really express his true voice, and he found no obligation to make a beautiful product or a product that could impress people, because、um, what he focused on was expressing his true voice. 我插少少嘴先啦嘛，我覺得其實誒頭先阿 Tim 嗰條片咧，我誒、um, 其實我睇嗰陣時候咧，我係好感動嘅，即係佢半夜三更 send 俾我睇嗰陣時候。咁我嘅感動咧，就唔係因為淨係我認識呢個年青人即係一段日子，而係我見到藝術係好似喺我哋而家呢個環境咁一個好局促嘅環境裏邊，我諗對每一個人啦，無論對年青人或者對所有嘅香港人，或者呢個世界上面所有誒經歷緊疫情嘅人嚟講，我哋好局促嘅時候，我突然間見到佢做一條片之後，我發覺我哋藝術佢好似好似一道窗啊！好似我哋一個好焗、好焗、好焗，就嚟焗到就係唞唔到氣嘅一個環境裏邊。藝術好似開咗一個窗，有一條罅，俾我可以唞氣，可以呼吸一種新鮮嘅空氣。而個新鮮空氣係可以話俾我聽 ：，OK， I'm still alive。我諗呢個感覺係，我覺得係對於我自己，起碼我誒、呃、今次搞嘅活動嘅，我見到。喺呢個時代，我哋做緊，我會明白藝術唔係一種誒、呃、奢侈品，佢唔係一種歌舞升平嘅時候只需要嘅。原來 David 之前同我講話，喺我哋呢個咁困難時候，我真真正正去感受到佢嘅力量，起碼俾到我自己。希望亦都係甚至可以俾到參與嘅所有藝術家同埋年青人同埋觀眾咯。So、um, when Olivia first watched、uh, Tim's work, she was、uh, really emotional because、um, uh, in this current situation, we are living in a really suffocating world. You know, the arts they are they're suffocating, and、um, when when she watched、uh, Tim's video, she felt that there was a crack on the window let, letting the air in, so she could breathe in through the crack on the window. Thank you. 我講完咁多，你講兩句。好 ，Ingrid，OK，OK， <笑> okay, okay, 好。咁啊，到阿 Ingrid 同埋，你又講下，你同阿誒。咁、啊、正如我頭先分享啦，就係、是、我個 work 係用我嘅畫去傳遞阿 Net 嘅故仔。咁所以咧，喺即係我知道喺我同阿 Net 合作之前咧，阿 Net 係花咗好多嘅時間去到寫佢過去嘅經歷啦，而去到即係我第一次去聽佢講自己嘅故仔嘅時候，我係覺得好驚訝。因為即、就、係、是、我知道佢作為一個公眾人物，而佢
，竟然可以咁坦誠去到信任我哋，去到分享一啲佢自己內心好深入嘅故仔，或者一啲過去其實可能都唔容易開口去講嘅傷痛嘅時候，其實我係真係好被佢嘅分享去到觸動啦，亦都好覺得就係一種坦誠分享嘅生命故事係。係能夠引起唔同嘅人去共鳴咯，即係我喺阿 Nick 嘅故事裏面揾到一啲我自己共鳴嘅部分，而我亦都好想即係、就是、透過自己嘅畫畫啦，誒透過嘅話咧，去到傳遞佢嗰種好內在嘅嘅情緒啦，或者係即係嗰一啲嘅 facial 嗰一啲嘅感受，點樣去到透過畫去到傳遞俾每一個觀眾。所以我每一次畫嗰啲畫之前咧，我都係有一個祈願，就係、是、我好想嗰啲睇到呢啲畫嘅人。佢哋都會感受到嗰一份、嗰份、嗰份醫治、嗰份被觸動嘅感動咯。就唔單單只係因為誒啲畫好靚，或者哦呢、這個係唐詩詠嘅故仔，而係因為佢係一個好有血有肉嘅故仔，而去係咯觸碰到每一個觀眾某一個部分。咁所以係咯喺呢次嘅參與裏面，我就。即係我發揮緊我自己點樣去透過畫，透過一種我相信係同言語啦、同舞蹈啦、同音樂唔同嘅，即係每一個媒介都有佢自己嘅力量，而畫都有一種嘅力量去到傳遞某個部分嘅時候，我點樣去到參與，點樣去到傳遞阿 Nick 嘅故事咯。咁所以大家都係咯，可以翻去靜心欣賞我哋嘅作品嘅。So um Ingrid believes that um. There are many mediums of art, and um, in his in her project with uh, Natalie, she, her job is to translate Natalie's thoughts and um, and uh, like her to deep feelings into visual images, and uh, she really admires Natalie because uh, she's a public figure and she's willing to open up her deepest um, emotional thoughts and uh, emotional feelings to the public, and uh, she finds it uh, she she had a great time uh, translating those deep feelings into visual images. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 下頭係，我有少少嘢想再分享少少咧，就係、是、本身其實誒、呃，我哋係會誒喺、呃、疫情未爆發之前咧，其實我哋真係我係帶帶住佢哋三 group 人咧，諗住有一個誒、呃、現場嘅演出嘅。咁喺呢個過程裏邊咧，我哋遇到好多嘅誒、呃、發生嘅事啦，誒、呃、令到我哋唔能夠做呢個演出。就變成一個 video 或者另外一啲 form 嘅嘢。我自己喺成個 process 裏邊，我見到俾佢哋都令到我有好多嘅成長。原因係因為誒、呃，我自己本身就好安全嘅，因為我好知道如果搞一個演出，我可以帶到佢哋去邊。而當一個變化轉咗出嚟嘅時候，啊，佢要轉成一個 video， 佢要轉成另外一啲 form 嘅時候，我自己都企咗喺度嚇。咁、啊、我我幫你啲乜嘢咁？咁而嗰樣嗰個反思係令到我覺得我哋就係可以變啦，同埋嗰個藝術係任何嘅 form， 其實都可以令到我哋能夠表達我哋自己嘅聲音，將我哋嘅故事講出嚟。咁所以好開心可以參與到 Lost Child Project 呢樣嘢，令到我哋有咁多嘅新嘅突破啦。係啊 ，Thank you。好嘅，咁點啊？下下一組。We have another group from the our social land and also the dance. So thank you, thank you, my story lens team. 多謝曬思密故事係你嘅朋友。好，今次咧我哋仲有兩個組別嘅朋友咧，包括咧有營動劇場嘅 Rico 啦 ，Red Chickens 嘅 Hans 啦，同埋一路清空嘅 Toby， 仲有我哋 No Man Is。An Island 無人事故島嘅 Eve Lang 同埋 Alisa， 好咁咧就我諗咧坐喺度當中咧都好想，即係心裏邊一定有個問題就係、是、啊藝術家咁啊，梗係可以做藝術啦，係嘛？即係如果我係社工，我係老師，咁咁點開始啊？點着手？咁我哋喺呢度咧就有個又係藝術。即係藝術家又係老師嘅 Rico 喺度，所以咧我就想邀請阿 Rico 咧講先講下你成個嘅創作意念啦，或者你喺個過程裏邊，你覺得你睇到學生佢哋嘅變化，或者你同佢 work 嘅時候有咩想同我哋分享下嘅？好，我爭在唔係社工啊，如果唔係齊曬三樣。誒<笑>、呃，我同連今次個作品咧，其實係同佢哋一齊創作嘅，即係唔係一個寫好嘅劇本，係一個。誒透過傾談，想了解佢哋而家面對喺生活上面嘅狀況係點樣。咁我同佢傾嘅時候，我我同年青人合作一路都喺度
抱住一種誒、呃、學嘢嘅心情，因為其實誒、呃、我好相信咧，其實年青人先至係真正最了解當下而家呢個世界嘅狀況嘅人。佢哋誒嗰個感受係好準確嘅，其實同埋佢哋好敏鋭嘅。只不過有陣時佢哋、呃、要透過一個藝術嘅形式去講翻個古仔出嚟嘅時候，佢佢未夠充足嘅經驗去用嗰種語言去講啫，只係咁所以咧，佢裏邊有好多嘢佢講唔到出嚟嘅。咁我估我同佢哋合作，我做嘅嘢就係幫佢設計一個遊樂場，一個 playground 俾佢哋可以用到嘅一個安全嘅佢哋信任嘅環境，等佢喺裏邊可以去誒。呃去透過嗰樣嘢去講佢想講嘅嘢，或者表達佢想表達嘅嘢。咁有陣時佢佢未必講得好流利，用嗰種方法。咁我喺側邊就係幫下佢點樣可以幫佢 shape 得更加清楚，講嘅更加準確佢佢哋想表達嘅嘢。咁我估個合作關係其實係咁樣。咁我哋就做咗嗰個作品出嚟。咁其實係總括咗佢哋誒嗰個喺呢段日子裏邊佢哋嗰種生命生活裏邊嗰種狀況啦。對於誒面對一啲佢哋唔知點處理一啲好大嘅題目，一個好大嘅好困難嘅關係，佢哋點樣面對咧？咁樣咁咁跌咗落去一個咩狀況裏邊？咁都好感謝啊！大會有呢個題目嘅，即係嗰有個大嘅 slogan 就係我哋係唔唔去解決個問題啊！一跌落去解決問題係解決唔到嘅，但係我哋就係一發現嗰啲問題，等於佢哋面對。嗰啲難題嗰埲牆嘅時候，佢解決唔到啊！但係咁佢面對嘅時候，佢係一個咩狀況咧？咁我哋就用呢個咁嘅方法去創作咗呢個嘅作品。So um Rico is both a teacher and an artist, and um when he teaches his students, his intention is not to create a performance, but to have a conversation with them. And he think he thinks that he、uh, he learns a lot from the students because. These students, they have a really sharp point of view of this world, but the only problem is they don't have the skills to express them. So what Rico does is he、uh, builds a playground for them and allows them to play in it and express themselves. And as、um, the slogan of、um, the Lost Child Project says, we cannot solve problems. It's almost impossible to solve problems, but we can play the problems. 咁啊，大家又係可以翻去咧睇下呢個混亂與秩序嘅距離。大家咦冇睇過，真係要翻去睇啊！咁另外咧，我哋都有兩個嘅誒團體啦嚇，一個 Rich Chickens， 一個就係一路清空。咁啊 ，Hans 咧同埋 Toby 咧就分別咧都係朝住去有關老人家同埋家庭一啲嘅故事嚟談。喺個過程裏邊咧，其實喺你哋嘅誒演出裏邊都有好多年青人嘅，又可唔可以分享下喺個嘅創作過程裏邊同佢哋合作嘅過程一啲嘅經驗？誒、呃，我呢個創作主要個開頭係有一個誒、呃、interview 開始嘅，咁就年青人誒、呃、去訪問誒、呃、一啲老人家，去探討關於寂寞呢一個主題嘅。咁誒、呃，我會覺得誒、呃，因為因為推敲到最後，因為一個疫情嘅關係啦，冇辦法係老人家去演出，因為比較擔心，咁所以就就用咗佢啲錄音咁樣啦。咁但係講翻嗰個誒誒誒誒。呃呃呃 interview 嗰度開始，其實我覺得嗰個已經係一個創作嘅開始嚟㗎啦，因為裏邊有好多關於聆聽同埋關於感受。喺嗰個過程裏邊，其實誒各自傾偈已經有好多年青人嘅故事同埋老人家嘅故事，佢哋會可能發現誒、嗯、啊，原來有啲嘢誒誒，老人家裏邊都有啲好年青嘅嘢喎。譬如其實有啲老人家係好中意用 WhatsApp 嘅。係唔中意傾電話嘅，咁但係有啲誒，同埋佢哋喺誒誒悶嘅時候，佢哋會主動去揾嘢玩嘅。反而年青人咧係中意可能係留喺屋企乜都唔做嘅。咁呢啲係其實好多嘢會發現，我哋好多時標籤咗好多嘢，而誒冇、呃、去真係去聆聽一啲嘢。咁所以誒 turn out 我哋擺翻落去做嘅時候，我哋將有一啲誒 VO 啊，同埋一啲年青人嘅訪問咧撈翻埋一齊嘅時候咧，其實反而啲年青人同老人家睇嘅時候咧，即係有啲我哋邀請翻佢哋嚟睇嘅時候，佢哋會感受到。誒、哎、原來其實我係咁講嘢㗎，誒、呃、原來，但係又好似年青人嗰啲係老人家嘅説話嚟㗎喎，咁樣咁我覺得嗰種聆聽同埋溝通，誒、呃、亦都會係令大家都重新去感受一下，究竟年青人同老人家，究竟佢哋分別係咩咧？一樣係乜嘢咧？其實會唔會大家其實都係人係有一啲共同嘅情感嘅咧？咁樣。So um in Hank's project. He、um, asked some teenagers to 
interview with the um, with uh, some old people, and uh, what he realized was um, stereotypes and labels they don't exist because some sometimes the teenagers would say things that sound really mature, and sometimes the old people they have habits that um, they have like some teenage, teenager habits. For example, some uh, old people, they prefer to use WhatsApp, they prefer to stay home all day. So what Hanks uh, discovered from this project is it's really important to listen and communicate because labels and stereotypes, they don't exist. Oh, uh 他們年輕人逐個逐個會說給我們聽 so um, for Toby, her project is about family, and uh, she's really grateful that she set the theme as family because um, it gave a really safe space for the students to open up and talk about their family, even about negative events about their families. And uh, it's not something that you bring up in a normal conversation. So um, by setting the theme as family, she, she really gave the safe space for the um, teenagers to express themselves. And uh, in her project, she uh, asked the teenagers to um, act from the point of view of their parents. So um, the teenagers, they actually could um, uh, really think about and ponder about like what their parents are feeling or thinking. Tatijavikol, 做的事情真的是一個platform,去讓大家connect, Actually, dance is a very physical thing, you know, that we have to move it. How come we can do the dance workshop in the Zoom meeting? And finally, we don't just have a dance performance on site, but actually we cross over on site and online and many different people dance together online and offline. So I would like to hear more about how if and you and Abby to do this thing and what Alisa think over the whole process as a participants. So your time. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce Abby. She's a very important person, another choreographer of No Man Is an Island. And she is now in uh, New York City. And we've been working uh, in this two months, more than two months, uh, uh, working uh, on phone uh, and also we are facilitating the workshop online in this period and she has something to say to us so um thank you abby
。咁網上教學其實咧就係一件好容易嘅事，亦都好新啦。咁我哋都係一路做一路學嘅，但反而網絡嘅資訊咧，年輕人比我哋知得仲多。時代不斷不斷改變，有好多嘢其實我哋真係唔識，我哋就要去問，就要去學，所以我哋唔可以死撐死要面，咁我哋要不恥下問。其實好多人都可以俾到好多方法我哋，跟住我哋可以共同咁樣解決問題，令到件事做得更加好。咁所以喺呢方面，我亦都好多謝年輕人佢哋嘅耐性啦，同埋佢哋嘅協助。咁當然，我哋都要建立一個互相尊重同埋互相信任嘅一個環境，加埋我哋都好中意周身喐，咁所以亦都相信藝術係可以表達到我哋自己嘅。創作其實係好有力量嘅，創其實就係一種創造力係好獨特嘅。作好似 action 係要付諸行動嘅，尤其是喺而家呢一個環境底下咧，創意其實係可以幫我哋突破到身心嘅困境嘅。創亦都包含咗創傷，同時我哋都相信藝術係可以治療到有一啲好潛藏喺心入邊嘅，或者係肉眼睇唔到嘅一啲傷痛。所以我好希望以後日子，我哋可以拍住年輕人一齊上，可以改變呢一個藝術嘅生態，令佢更加有持續性。亦都祝願呢班年輕人，佢哋喺未來嘅日子可以做到佢哋想做嘅嘢。Happy, Happy, thank you, Happy。咁其實誒，我同 Happy 嘅諗法差唔多啦。咁誒，同各位嘅導師咧一樣，原本成個 project 咧就誒個、呃、形式唔係咁嘅。咁改曬嘅時候咧，咁我同 Abby 咧都好緊張啦。究竟可以點樣做咧？咁我好多謝 Abby 嘅信任啦。我哋一直開會傾嘅時候，我哋喺度傾可唔可以俾一個平台誒、呃、一啲年青人去用唔同嘅 art forms、唔同嘅表達形式，透過 video 去講佢哋嘅感受咧。咁樣咁，所以我哋就做咗誒、嗯、幾日。係啦嘅 video 嘅 communication， 除咗佢哋去創作佢哋嘅 video 啦，透過畫畫啊、音樂啊、誒 movement 啦，係啦，咁啊會唔會有一啲誒、呃、其他人可能係同佢哋認識唔深嘅？去 respond 佢哋嘅 video 咧，因為我哋平時睇完演出之後，大家都誒、哎、好好喎、啊，演出得好好喎、啊，跳得好好喎、啊、咁。究竟有冇一啲誒、呃、深入啲嘅誒 non-verbal 嘅語言啊，可以同佢中間作為一個溝通咧？咁樣，咁我哋就邀請咗幾位 dancer 啦，去拍誒、呃、一條片。當佢哋睇完年青人嘅片之後，啊有冇一啲嘢都想同佢哋講翻咧？但係用一種誒 non-verbal 嘅 way 咧，咁樣。咁所以呢個形式完全轉曬嘅時候，都係。一種實驗性質，咁成個過程我哋都同啊誒 participant 講啊，其實 is an experiment 係啦，誒、呃、我哋都唔知會 turn out 係點樣噶，咁我哋遇到好多 difficulty 同大家一樣啦，遇到好多困難，我哋亦都 share during the workshop we share our difficulty， 咁誒、呃、透過呢個瞭解同溝通咧，變咗。我哋就好似更加 work together, work tightly， 係咯，我哋一齊去 play with the problems， 係<笑>啊，真係認認真真咁樣。咁成個過程，我覺得最珍貴嘅係誒，可以俾到佢哋去真實地 express how they feel， 係啦。咁誒、呃，我哋都好多謝佢哋咯，教識我哋好多嘢，同 Abby 一樣，教識我哋好多 technical 上嘅嘢咯，係真係。呃 <laughs> well, um, so um, Abby and uh, Eve, um, they are uh, dance choreographers, and um, when this um, uh, Lost Child project and when it transformed its form into a, a Zoom class or a, like a virtual setting, it was a challenge to uh, teach dance moves or to communicate verbally through uh, electronic devices. So, um, but but it it was possible, and um, Eve was really thankful that um, despite this these challenges, they still managed to teach children how to express non-verbally. 咁我首先都好多謝 Eve 老師同埋 Abby 老師咧，佢哋係好願意去接納同埋好包容我哋每一個諗法，亦都係不停咁樣鼓勵我哋點樣去將你自己最內在嘅嘢去分享出嚟啦，同埋係冇 right or wrong 嘅。咁同埋成個過程入面咧，好深刻嘅係覺得成個。project 咧，到最尾原來係一個 surprise， 一份 gift 嚟嘅。喺個過程入面，我哋有好多嘅誒唔同嘅聲音帶領啊，又或者有唔同嘅誒、呃、exercise 喺 Zoom 嗰度試啦。咁因為 dance 嘅人同平時都要喐開咁樣，咁所以我哋係冇 imagine 過，哇！一個 Zoom 嘅堂可以係點樣做嘅咧？
但係咧，結果出嚟咧個感覺係反而更加自由咯。因為就算你喺間房度，你冇乜空間可以發揮，但係其實原來你誒、呃、再挖深啲自己真正想表達啲乜嘢，然後將你最有限嘅資源拎曬出嚟，再重整一次，原來嗰件事係可以好美麗嘅。咁所以咧，就好多謝 Eve 同埋 Abby 咧，喺個過程入面對我哋一班參加者十分之信任，就係、是、話你做啦，你做就 OK 噶啦，我哋可以一齊去行嘅咁樣。咁所以就成件事係個 journey 係好美好，到我哋最後真係睇到個成果嘅時候，覺得所有嘢真係一個很好好嘅禮物送俾大家啦。多謝 ，Thank you。So um, Elisa is very thankful for uh, Eve's encouragement because during the, uh, uh, the the creation process, Eve was really uh, encouraging to the students. She uh, she told the students that there are no right or wrong, so it really gave them the freedom to externalize their feelings. And even though it's done through a Zoom setting, it's done through a virtual setting, and the uh, students are actually in their own rooms um, dancing around, the same effect was still uh, present because the children, they were still externalizing how they feel deep inside. 我咧誒、呃、放佢哋走之前，我一定要講翻呢樣，即係誒、呃、我誒呢、呃、件事係一件好神奇嘅事嚟嘅，即係正如好似以阿 Eve 同阿 Abby 同啲年青人嘅 work， 其實佢哋咧係誒大家即係冇見過面啦，但係可以做咗個 work 嘅，即係咧我哋佢其實我哋星期六嗰日咧係佢哋一啲 dancer 有啲實即係實體 dancer 現場嘅 dancer 喺度跳緊舞嘅時候，同一時間咧佢後邊有個 video 就。誒嗰啲嗰啲嘅學生其實就喺過去嘅兩個月就喺網上面不斷啊 ，Abby 仲喺美國係冇出現過嘅，咁然之後佢哋可以喺網上面上咗堂，剪曬啲片，大家溝通曬之後，然之後到到星期六咧，亦都有啲實體嘅 dancer 喺度，大家然之後我見到有啲年青人，即係嗰啲 dancer 咧，同埋嗰啲誒年青人咧係第一次嗰、那個作品完成咗之後先至第一次見面，即係呢件事咧唔係淨係呢個 work 係好多個 work 都係咁。譬如頭先阿唐思榮嗰個亦都係啦，咁喺網上面其實係誒嗰個即係、就是、動畫嘅誒，幫住動畫導演啊，有啲叫合成啦，動畫合成嗰啲，其實係從來冇真正見過面。有啲時候咧，佢哋黑掹掹嘅，直到有個人冇見過樣，因為由頭到尾得個名嘅啫。咁但係做咗成條片，然之後到到嗰前日，我哋先至真正第一次相見。咁呢個係一個好新時代，亦都係好我哋某某程度，我哋真係需要接受咯。即係接受時代係不斷轉變。作為藝術家，其實我我係自己好興奮，因為藝術就應該係不斷嘅進步同不斷嘅轉變嘅。藝術形式可以有好多唔同嘅嘅形式會出現，亦都可能有新嘅形式係冇人知道將會係會發展成乜嘢。即係好似當年電影出現，冇人諗過電影會有呢個 form 走出嚟嘅，即係喺劇場嘅時候。咁所以我覺得我哋。藝術家或者我哋要做或者係今時同年青人我哋呢個 project， 我覺得我哋就係點樣 say yes， 即係好似阿 David 講話誒 yes and 就唔係 yes but， 因為我哋太多 yes but， 所以所有嘢就係想翻翻去以前，唔得噶，唔得噶，唔得嘅。但喺年青人世界裏邊或者藝術世界裏邊係應該 yes and， 你不斷 yes and 嘅時候。新嘅 possibility 就出現，然之後新嘅 possibility 出現嘅時候，其實我哋就會一段不斷係行前緊咯。咁我相信藝術係需要同人嘅脈搏，當時呢個時間嘅人嘅脈搏，我哋係要明白佢哋，我哋要感受到佢哋。咁所以我覺得誒係咯，所以今次係一件誒我哋自己嘅裏邊嘅團隊或者甚至觀眾都係一個非常新嘅嘗試咯，學到真係學到多嘢。So, <laughs> so Olivia believes that um, art and the form of art, uh, it's always evolving and it's always ever changing. For example, a theater was once uh, evolved into film and uh, we should always embrace, we should always feel the pulse of this uh, changing art form. For example, in this uh, new project here, there were many creators and they've never met before. Before, before the um, completion of the process, they've ne never met in real life before, but through these uh, techn technological um, um, communication processes, they could like create together in different places. For example, Abby was in New York the whole time, but uh, on Saturday they still uh, formed an, a whole uh, a, a whole dance performance. And uh, Olivia believes that we should always say yes and to these changes. We should always embrace these changes. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, our social land and my dance group. Yeah, I know. We have time is almost up, but I don't want to. 亦都唔想 miss 咗呢一 part 咧，我哋 Q&A 嘅時間。好，咁咧我哋要請翻阿 David 同埋 
Tom Gale and also Dr. Paul Wong and Rajal. This is the time to open the forum for um, Q and A. So, audience, you may uh, share your thoughts and feelings or questions to us. You may use either Cantonese or English. Uh, mm -hmm. Just signal us by raising your hand, and if you are invited, please briefly introduce yourself and whom you want to talk to or ask the questions. Or David, Tom, Paul, and Virgil, if you have any feedback, you can also share. Feel free yes, to share. Yes, yes. What to say? <laughs> okay, uh, I see someone raise your hand at the back. Maybe Asha can pass the mic to her. And after that, Virgil has something to share. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chi Chi. I am a artist myself. Um, actually, this question I was thinking it's more for David, um, but I think it's also applicable to all of you on the stage here. Uh, it has to do with creating safe space for young people. So, since last year in June, um, I became very concerned about the uh, mental issues of young people, like all of you. And I joined a group of artists who are political, um, sorry, who are activists and psychologists and um, social workers. And we want to engage with young people who, are, who have been heavily affected by the current political movement. But what we found very difficult was that it was very hard to reach out to these people um, due to the lack of trust. They don't, they tend to be very close among themselves. They, you know, as you may know, they, they use their own kind of social media groups um, and they only tend to stick around with people within the circle. Um, for adults or young or, or young adults like me, it was extremely difficult to really get to the the core. Um, I mean, even if you get to get to know them, get to meet them, it was really hard to get them get them open up their space, the the internal space. Um, so my question um, for David is, how do you you mentioned about creating a safe space for people so they can be creative and free? Um, so my question for you is, how do you do that in times like this in Hong Kong? Um, uh, yeah. Yes, thank you for your question, Chi Chi. It's a very, very important, very, very relevant question. Also, it is the very beginning of any of these creative journeys is, is trying to create that safe or secure environment. And what you first have to recognize, especially from all children, but particularly teenagers, is they create, they actually are creating their secure spaces all the time. They have to, um, in one way or another. This can be a specific space, and often it is. Um, you know, you will find that if you if you follow teenagers or a teenage gang around, you and you they don't know you're following them, they'll have found a space in their world at some level already. Um, and then there is also a space that's internal, which is to do with social structures, to do with the, the, the meanings within each other. Now, the problem with what you're talking about here is how can you make that um, in some way or other express itself in a more creative way? Because sometimes it can be very destructive. Now, I want to say one thing about destructiveness. We must recognize that we are destructive. Everyone has had lunch today. You have just destroyed parts of the world in order to give you strength, energy, and some of it um, you've gone to the toilet with. These three aspects are happening every moment. As you listen to my words, some of it gives you strength, and you might think about it in 10 days' time. Other ones just give you energy, like going to see Mamma Mia, and other bits you go, I don't know what he's talking about, but for the person next to you, it gives them strength. And so teenagers are doing this at a very accelerated rate. 
all the time. They're destroying things, they're creating things, and um, uh, some of it they're learning from. So the first thing to say is, although it's frustrating, they are actually doing it. I try to say this a lot. We, we, we don't have to do very much to be creative. What we have to work at is, is learning to stop ourselves being creative. We have to learn to stop doing that. That's what's hard. And the other aspect, uh, I think you're ta talking about teenagers, I think, here a lot of the time, is we have to recognize they're in a kind of what I would call a corridor space, in fact, all the time, between home and the future, which is a world that they don't know about, they can only imagine. Um, and so, in a way, the, if you go to any teenager's room, if they have a room, you will find things like posters of Marilyn Manson or pop stars or listening to music their parents don't necessarily like or approve of. But what they're actually doing is creating a safe space that seems sometimes crazy to us, but it is their art studio. And that art studio they are creating all the time. They tell jokes. Sometimes those jokes become so serious it becomes bullying, but it, nonetheless they are testing the world around them because their job as teenagers is to find a way of surviving. In a number of the workshops I teach, the child, the, the, the work of the child is what is this? What is this world? The, 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 the question for the teenager is not what it is, it's how do I fit in or not? That's the central creative question. And if you can create a secure environment that creates, that allows that to happen, which supports those teenagers, you will find a way forward. I know I'm not answering your question specifically because I can't, because unless I'm on the ground and knowing these groups, but they will already create secure spaces. Um, a drama space is very good because guess what? It's really about people exploring play. It's, that's its only use. Um, I'm sure um, uh, uh, over in um, uh, the islands, New Zealand and Fiji and so on, they have often spaces which are places of play or worship. These two things come together. So um, it's very interesting, West Side Story, the whole story really takes place in a playground in the theater. So a playground is very important. That's all I can answer in a, in a more general sense. I'm sorry about that, TG. I hope it helps in some way. The other thing to say is we go to a place of security not to stay secure. We go to security to go to insecure places in our imagination with each other. And it's just like climbing Everest. You get to base camp and you go, oh, it's not so bad. I can breathe oxygen here. And then you carry on. Because guess what? Teenagers, all of them, want to reach out to try to make difference and find excellence. And so they are constantly climbing Mount Everest, building base camps, and then going from there. The difficulty is each of them are actually going in different directions. There's not one place. So uh, it's a, a wonderful, difficult, and beautiful problem, Titi. Thank you for your work, though. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, so, if I may, can I just quickly answer your answer to your response? Um, mm -hmm. So you mentioned that it's more it, it's probably more important to be less creative than to be creative at, uh, in times like this, and I think I can personally testify to that. Um, because for I for for some time now, I've been feeling that art has been a bit slow in responding to what we are feeling in this environment. So I have started to volunteer for a local uh, political group, and through that, I actually met a lot of uh, younger people that I've been dreaming to engage with. And they are so easy to open up with, with me, um, especially seeing the kind of art that I do and, 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 uh, and the, the fact that I have been trying to um, voice out for Hong Kong myself. And uh, yeah, so I think by giving out my, creati my creative space, I actually found my secure space to connect with people who are insecure, but um, they together we find more security. That's, it. Mm. that's, that's great, Chi Chi. That makes it's a great, great sense. sense. Creative people are very instinctive people. They uh, instinct, intuition is really accelerated thinking. And later on, they go, "Oh, this kind of makes sense." And at this moment of enormous change happening everywhere, um, the reason I feel artists uh, need to lead and also need to stop being celebrities—they need to lead. 
as do creative scientists, as do creative social workers and so on, is because this change is happening in very small levels everywhere. And we have to include this change and then transform it in some way or other. So transformation is happening all around you. This symposium, you will look back at the symposium as a moment of intensified change in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. We'll all go away and some of it will take away and we'll affect, it'll affect our lives. And that's why these mm -hmm. gatherings are so important. So Chi Chi, well done. Mm -hmm. Stay strong. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> so actually, I was thinking of uh, something related to, to this question. You know, the themes that I keep coming back to when looking at uh, youth mental health in Hong Kong is really just so it's such a such a big big problem affecting so many young people and this issue of trust is actually more significant now than ever so i think that you know there's a lot that can be done with models uh, like the lost child project but you know at save the children we're actually thinking more and more lately about um, what can we do not to simply uh, uh, enter into or create that safe space for young people, but what can we do to empower them to bring our tools into their own safe space? Uh, so what can we do to help young people to bring uh, mental health awareness and mental health supportive uh, knowledge and, and tools and drama and the arts into their safe space and empower them to bring it to, to children in their community? So that's another way that I think we can, we can start looking at and thinking about this challenge. So um, I, I remember, uh, uh, one more question? Oh, better questions. Oh, <laughs> in fact, it's a question to Tom and Nina, because I remember previously in our Zoom meeting, we also talk about the trust issue. But um, can the, maybe go to that question first, and then Tom and Nina maybe share uh, when you work with young people, how to build up the trust. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm Margaret, and I'm actually a time planner myself, and I'm studying a master's degree in art and culture enterprise. And I found uh, today's discourse very interesting because I hear what technological advancement like um, online live stream has helped you know, artists to get together mm. to do a collaborative work, even mm. if people are you know, not in the same place or in different countries. Mm -hmm. And I also heard uh, Mr. David Grass talk about a safe place for um, many young people. They want to stay in a safe place. And the reason why I come to this um, conference is because um, I, I'm interested in the topic of you know, about how art can um, help um, the to create the well-being of um, youth. And I, I always think about, oh, would it be about public space? Because uh, we planners are concerned about public space, and we always think um, public space can help enhance um, the well-being of people, and mental well-being, or you know, if you see something artistic and aesthetic, you will feel happy. So I'm interested in knowing what do you feel about you know, the public space aspect of um, creating arts as a platform for um, creating arts. Yeah, thank you. Who would like to? Tom, Anina, or David, or any speakers? I, I, I can answer a little bit. I, I think that um, uh, I think that uh, cultural space. Um, if we stop thinking about it as being something that is a luxury, something that is about an elite or about only people who can go and pay a ticket to be there, but is really a place, another place of safety where extraordinary things can happen. So um, somewhere like Taiwan, I'm so delighted that this what was a colonial prison has turned into a place of imaginative liberation. It's, 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 it's reversed. And this is what the arts do very, very well. They take something, they turn it upside down. The arts are a place of turning things upside down. Mm. Um, the story of Romeo and Juliet is suddenly teenagers have a great power on stage to talk about their lives. Um, and so this aspect of culture is this way of seeing the world in a mirror. Um, Shakespeare talks about that. Also like dreams, you suddenly are able to explore something you can't in normal life. And depending on the social systems, um, uh, some are very tight, as I say, some are very open, but cultural spaces are beautiful places where we can give 
time for all people to dream, not just established artists, but all artists, children, everyone, and social workers and mental health people. So um, I think this is an easy answer. We need to take our cultural spaces and make them more available. Um, I would say that the arts is the democracy of the heart. It's not a political democracy in the arts. It's, a, it's an emotional and imaginative democracy, which any, every, there's a place at the table for everyone, and cultural space serve this. So I would like to follow the questions about trust. Uh, Tom and Nina, do you have any idea how, how to build up trust with young people? As so we said, in Hong Kong situations, there are trust going a bit, tensions or breakdown nearly. Well, <clears throat> it's a, it, there's many layers. There's many layers to the to the question. I mean, I think we are read before we speak, before we before we think we're acting. If we walk into a room full of people, they are already reading us before we deliver any of our content, and so the work in building trust doesn't begin in, in the room itself. It begins before we go into the room ourselves. We have to be very honest with ourselves if we're adults working with young people, is have we done the work ourselves to do the work with other people? Have we met ourselves sufficiently uh, in order to meet others? Um, because otherwise it, it comes back to this idea of an outcome. If people can feel that you're trying to force a particular outcome or you have a prescribed idea of what you want to happen for young people, then you're doomed to failure before you even begin, uh, I think. And so the key, the key is, is to really um, ask yourself, uh, are you committed to the changes that you want to see happen in yourself first, I would say was one of the key factors. Nina, in terms of how we create safety in a room and trust, that's something you're, you're wonderful. Are you there, Nina? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, can, what, what would you yeah, say Marco. about ways which you think are important culturally to create trust that we work with? Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, um, I suppose um, <clears throat> for myself, um, I think, you know, trust is such a real thing, isn't it? And um, and I suppose that uh, moment, um, that moment for young people uh, to open to you uh, or feel that they want to follow you, what are the, why would they follow you and what are the reasons? And so... And um, what are the class systems and who, who is standing in front of them? And so for myself, um, I suppose that is part of um, the way I like, you know, I work with Pacific and Māori people and, and I am uh, from that bloodline. I think, you know, the things of poverty and class and, um, and how how for them to truly feel safe. Um, I suppose I'd, I'd like to have, yeah, um, how to make them feel safe enough to truly open themselves. It's such a real thing, isn't it, um, that you're facing in Hong Kong and, and you say, like, why will they not open or why will they not listen or why will they not share? And... Um, um, only, I mean, I can only talk from my own personal perspective. Sometimes I work with um, younger people who are beside me that are from the same communities or um, that they feel that they can allow themselves to, I suppose it's that thing of not being judged, isn't it, David? And how do we, how do we lead people into that space and how do we open that space up and, um, and, and how do they allow themselves, even, even for myself, you know, it was a lot of them sort of look at me and go, oh my gosh, you're old now. And um, what would you know? And, 
Um, so it's a, it's a really interesting, I think it's really interesting how, how you work on the floor with them and how you lead them towards feeling um, that their voice is so relevant and that you, that, that you will listen to them and not judge them. And um, so I suppose, you know, we all have our own methodologies or ways to work and, um, and depending on the group and depending on all of those things. I mean, it is, it's, no, it's no straight answer, but um, mm. yeah, what do you think, David? Uh, I think exactly that, the judgment, but mm. you can set very specific things. I think we're mm. simply coming into a room and not sitting in front of people, but rather being in a circle, immediately mm. people feel, oh, right, we, we're, we can all see each other. And that mm. also engages peripheral vision, which in, 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 engages uh, dopamine endorphins, which lowers our anxiety. Mm. Um, if you sit on the floor, immediately you find when even with small children, you're kind of at a, at a similar height as them. So you lower the hierarchies, but not in a, uh, a set rule way, just by doing it. That helps. Mm. Um, mm. You know, when we, when we, I remember when I was at primary school, and I loved primary school because basically the, there was no tables or chairs really. You just crawled around the floor a little bit. Uh, sorry, in infant school, and the teacher would uh, get close to you and you'd read stories. But then suddenly I got into primary school and we had to sit behind desks and face the the, the teacher. And I kept on pushing my my stomach because I wanted to be near the teacher because I liked her um, against the desk. And I said, "What are these stupid desks?" And so very simple physical things with all children change the meaning of a space and the space has to be, you have to work with that. And again, a drama studio is good for that because there's no, you really mm. sit on the floor a lot of the time. Simple things like this, mm. I think. Mm. But, um, mm. but each in their own way, you have to find your way. Mm. It's a big mm. question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, our guests, our audience. It's uneasy for me to say because we've been so enjoying and treasure the sharing. Um, before wrapping up, I would like to invite if Dr. Wong had something to say. <laughs> well, I can't no, answer any of those questions. Uh, I guess one of the things we need to ask is how the mistrust was developed and ask ourselves as adults. What can you offer? Are you offering what they want? Uh, there are some times we want to offer something to people, but it's not what they want. When there's a mismatch, whether it's a spaceful phase or not, it doesn't matter. It's actually the match between the needs and the supply. Right? Mm -hmm. So as adults, we always miss the point. <laughs> we think we know what to offer. We think we create something for them we know better. But I'm not sure. Yeah. always have the answers so anyway I, I, as a men I, I, mental health person too i want to bring back to the mental health <laughs> topic um i wonder if you watched telly uh, a few days ago the government is starting to roll out a initiative for mental health and then we got Ethan chen to sing a song and blah 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 we need to work outside the box come on <laughs> we have so many songs like that before we have so many posters like that before. We have so many seminars on mental health before. Now is the time to do something different. I believe in evidence-based practice. But if there is no evidence, we can only try. <laughs> anyway, so that's... I, I, I think, if I could just say something here. Uh, also, we, um, I think one of the problems we have is young people, all they kind of go is a cynicism, which is... I am merely here to sell things to you. You want me to shop, you want me to buy things. Is that right? And so, you know, when people talk about messages, they're saying, will you buy my message? And what's wonderful about uh, art is you go, there's no message to buy. It's an experience. It's just an experience. And through experiencing, this is what's true to life. But if everything is basically, you're trying to sell me education, you're going to sell me an idea, an ideology, then you become cynical. Um, it's, I get cynical, we're all cynical of that. And so I think a process which says, no, we're here to basically have some fun. Immediately you say that, you go, oh, okay, uh, anybody with a half a mind would say, okay, I'd rather have fun than be bored or buy things all the time. So, so thank you, our guests. And you may be seated. Before we come to the end of the forum, I would like to invite Olivia to have the last word with us. Uh, 
我哋今次呢、这個誒成、呃、個節目，我非常非常之多謝好多好多好多好多唔同嘅誒 partners， 包括頭先所有所有嘅誒、呃、我哋嘅即係 guest 啦，同埋 David 啦，咁啊仲有好多嘅人需要喺呢度用佢好快地去誒講少少嘅誒名謝嘅。咁啊首先就就係誒好多謝大管啦，咁啊所有嘅工作人員啦，誒、呃、台前幕後啦，咁亦都係非常多謝 Eddie 嘅。多謝你同埋你嘅同事嘅全力嘅 support，thank you，thank you，thank you， 嚇！咁 you, you. 啊，當然咧，誒、呃、誒，更加需要多謝嘅 Jockey Club 啦。咁今次我哋成個 program， 佢非常之感謝 Jockey Club， 佢可以亦都係全力支持我哋，冇佢哋，我哋呢個就好難去。搞到醒嘅啦，非常非常之多謝。咁另外咧，就亦都我哋有兩個 meeting partners 嘅，咁啊好感謝就係明報嘅，係啊，今日 Patrick 都喺度，非常之多謝你哋嘅支持。你哋嘅係啊，你哋嘅同事嘅所有嘅訪問都係非常之有心，同埋係做得好好，多謝，非常感謝感謝。咁另外仲有 Movie Movie 啦嘅誒誒朋友啦。咁另外咧，我哋今次 live stream 咧，我哋都誒誒有 technical 嘅 support。又係非常重要，冇咗你哋咧，我哋嘅 live stream 就做唔成嘅啦。咁啊，包括係 T L Y 嘅 Hermes 嘅 Hermes Live 嘅，同埋 Open Sky TV 嘅嚇，非常之多謝你哋。哦，咁<笑>咧，咁另外咧就係啊 Kelly Jackie 誒佢嘅演出，我哋咧就好有趣，就可以喺佢哋嘅啊 Craft。嘅佢哋嘅一個嘅傢俬店係啦，誒好靚嘅咁，咁<笑>我哋就喺嗰度咧就搞亂咗人哋嘅嘅傢俬店咧，就搞咗個小型嘅 mini 嘅嘅音樂會喺嗰度，咁就非常之感謝佢哋嘅支持我哋。咁啊，另外咧就仲有其他其他嘅所有。所有 artist 啦，所有嘅誒、呃，所有 artist 背後嘅 artist 啦，所有 artist 背後嘅唔同嘅 support 啦。嚇咁啊！另外就係我哋嘅誒，我哋自己嘅 team 嘅人啦，所有總之所有人，但係最多謝嘅就係所有參與嘅年青人。誒、呃，冇你哋，我哋係冇意義嘅做所有嘢。咁所以你哋嘅參與對我哋嚟講先係最重要嘅。咁我俾啲大聲啲嘅掌聲大家 ，thank you， 唔該曬 ，thank you，thank 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 you。I would like to once again thank you all for joining, and、uh, let's co-creating hope ahead together.、Oh. And this is the end of our forum. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.